Uh, as long as you can hear me. We can hear as long you as fine. you can hear me. Look at the bitrate. Look at the freaking. It looks like porn I used to watch in 2001. Low bitrate. But can you hear me? And that's the main thing. Oh, yes, yes, just yes. Every time I'm talking, Asa, just, just put ranting Greek gamer's face on so that it looks like he's talking. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's better. Do everyone a favor. Uh, shout out to everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for waiting patiently. And sorry for being late again. I spent this time 44 minutes late. We had to set it up a little bit later because my internet is dead and I'm using this this little device is powering the internet from my house for until Tuesday. So um, apologies if there are any errors or if I drop out. But I'm sure Acer will be able to handle the show going forward. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We have an incredible show for you today with some lovely faces. All lovely faces, except mine, which is pixelated as f Um, Acer, are you ready mm. to take over the show in case I absolutely... Get yeah, absolutely. If that happens, it happens, internet. right? And it, it might well happen because you are lagging and stuff. One little correction there, though. Your face is actually better than usual this week. I'm actually quite enjoying the blur. It's a bit of a relief for me. Um, wow. Wow. Ooh. wow. Ooh, not wow. really, Gaz. It's, it's, it's a shame. Um, I'm mostly I'm in a bad mood because this coffee is almost an hour old. Um, you didn't tell me we were like... You didn't tell me any of this until five past nine, so I'm just sitting there going, oh, <laughs> coffee's going cold. So now I'm in a bad mood, but apart from that, like, I'm looking forward Sorry to a good show because we've got Elias Ranting, Greek gamer, who's who's been around like supporting us for, for ages hello, and hello. apparently likes our show, so it's awesome to have him on. We've got Deadly Headley, who obviously, besides this one time when he absolutely stabbed me in the back and lied about Brote, so Deadly Headley is my guy from the Xbox Series podcast, so it's going to be a fantastic <laughs> show. Let's get, let's get through it while your connection holds up. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's get, let's get going. Deadly Headley, he's your co-host now. You are, you are a little virgin until we broke you and your internet hymen. And now you are this <laughs> oh absolutely, <my> God. <laughs> absolutely fair. You are ready now. You're weathered I, I would, and I would I'm like ready to, chat to tonight. go broken. I would like to chat Acer. to know that Gaz Acer. was very gentle. He was he was very, very gentle and very soft-handed with breaking said Hyman. But we're good. We're good. We're, Moist, we're a seasoned yeah. professional somewhat, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are. You are. You definitely are. I've seen you do. I've seen you on Acer's show. You haven't said anything outlandish yet, which means you've not made it yet. You need to say something silly so the ponies can uh, record that shit and share it around. When that happens, then I yeah, know you've definitely fun. made it. <laughs> uh, this, this is the show to do that because we've got our favourite fans. Shout out to Nick Marseille, who's going to be there eagerly waiting to weaponize every single word we say. And I love it. I love our bald friend. Um, last, but certainly not Please, Calispera, Calibera, it is the Malaya. Calispera. <laughs> Ratchet Greek Timo. Oh. Hello, guys. Hello. The Greek outfit in the house. Smash the plates. Smash the plates. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> no, shut up! Shut up! You know, smash, smash the plates! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Bro, I had so many Greek friends, so I know a lot. <laughs> Most of my friends were Greek at university. They're all women. Oh really? Um, they, yeah, very horny, um, but also very lovely. They were very down to earth, and I would say very similar in mentality to Pakistanis in many ways. Actually, yeah. I really uh, shout out to Kula. Nicole, Eleanor, this is to you. You're never watching this, so go fuck <laughs> yourselves. Um, so, so tell us, bro. Tell us who who the f are you, bro? This the okay. Greek. We 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 had we had one scout at Malaga, Zoka eight seventy. We're watching this, you piece of shit. Um, listen, I'm more Greek than you. If you're watching this, you baby carrot munching piece of shit. <laughs> Ranty Greek gamer has confirmed I am part of the Greek Brotherhood. Isn't that right? Isn't you that are, right? You are, you are, yes, yes. Since last yes. week, since you you came to my stream, yes, of course you are. Of, uh, of course you are. One hundred percent. Thank you. I, I needed to add that to uh, my repertoire. Greek yoga shout out to greek the greeks are so good what do you mean scorch so the greek gamer tell tell people who are you what what, what is a every time we get a new guest 
we asked uh, a debuting guest to tell, tell a little bit about themselves. What is your channel about? What are you are about? Are you a real person? I am a real person. Um, my name is uh, Ilias, and I have uh, and I have a gaming streaming channel for uh, eleven years now, and it's called Jeez. Ranting Greek Gamer. And uh, I have been mm -hmm. in the Greek gaming space for uh, eleven years, and um, I do videos, I do streams, and I stream and play every single new game that comes out to my uh, audience. I'm doing mm -hmm. mostly streams, but I try also to upload one uh, video every week. And it pretty much has been my full-time job for like five years now. And uh, it's it's nice. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, I see you, your streams are a lot of fun, even though they are in Greek. So um, it's something that you need to be mindful of. And you're recently playing Rise of the Ronin! Um, Rise of the Ronin and uh, dr uh, dr uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, a whole lot of that. Oh my god, I love that game. It is my game of the year, I think. Uh, I can't stop mm. playing that Which damn one? Rise game. of the Ronin or Dragon's Dogma 2? Uh, 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 Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, okay. And I love that game. It's, it's amazing. Game. I keep playing it. Um, I keep playing it and uh, I love it. I really, really do. But uh, I also play on my Xbox. I am doing now a second playthrough of uh, Alan Wake 2. I'm playing new game plus. Second playthrough? Wow. Yeah, because I heard and they are right that if you play the game a second time, then you will see the real, real ending. And yeah, I've actually I just watched it on YouTube after I've completed it. You, and, you do get the real ending. Yeah. But the but the great thing about that game is when you play it for the second time and you know some things that are going to happen there, you um, you uh, can you uh, can uh, you can uh, you can understand so many more stuff from the story and and from the characters and things like that and and it is bloody awesome and i love this game it, it is a great game i mean you have to play I, it for a second time in uh, order actually to fully appreciate it have any of you other gents played and completed alan wake 2. not, not even yet started no. that one not yet uh, no Oh. I, I yeah I've completed it and I I, I was I was uh, very different to you ranting I liked the story um but I couldn't put myself through that game again like initially oh. impressed me but I found the gameplay to be called really just uh just gameplay for me is the, the forefront of things and for the story to carry me forward it has to be a really good story and it was a good one but it started to get a little bit samey and it made me realize that maybe perhaps Remedy's storytelling of late it just isn't for me because um Jess, Jess Gordon uh re the last week or this week was just sharing like he says Quantum Break was a masterpiece and in many ways in terms of visual style and the, vi the, the graphics fidelity of that game incredible but I found it to be so incredibly dull. Like, like I know it's, it's clever, the story's there, the time bending and all of that. But I just didn't like it. I hated the gameplay in that game. And they had some serious issues with AI, serious issues with some of the platforming sections seemed redundant. Um, but yeah, but different strokes for different folks. What do you think of um, Rise of the Ronin? Because a lot of people are like shitting on that game. I think I would actually like that game because I liked Wolong. If, did you play Wolong ranting and did you like Wolong? And did you do you like Rise of the Ronin? Um, uh, Wolong, I played only a little bit because I couldn't get to grips with its uh, combat system. I mm -hmm. thought that it relied very much on uh, countering your foes and it kind of yeah. turned me off. I will give it another shot at some point. But Rise of the Ronin, I have to say that despite all the backlash that this game has been uh, taking, I like this game a, a, a lot actually. It is fun. Mm. Um, as for the graphics, 
it is not Ghost of Tsushima level by no by no means, but yeah. I like it that I have a, a performance mode that it is a clean a clean sixty FPS with no blurriness, with no frame chopping, with no nothing, and it is a clean clean sixty FPS gameplay because I am more of an FPS guy than an, than yeah. an image quality guy. Um, so mm-hmm. I really like the game a whole lot, and um, it is. I think that it is getting a whole lot of backlash for no reason. I heard that some people they say that it's combat system that uh, it is not great, but the truth is that. Uh, in order to fully flesh out the combat system of that game, you really must invest into the uh, s- uh, skill trees and uh, unlock mm. more uh, abilities. And once you do that, then the game then the game gets so much more fun. Uh, but so what, what about game. the core core combat system? Because what when you say that, I I, I think well. All right, I have to invest some time into unlocking some abilities for the combat to be good. Yeah. Whereas with yeah. Wo Long, what I like about the fact that the core fighting mechanic based on this parry system made it just like that almost like brutalistic, just simplistically good. Like it was a very simple system of parry, parry, attack that really just encouraged players to be very aggressive. A lot of people think, like, put that in the Soulsborne area. I don't think it really is even remotely Soulsborne, I guess. But that parry system just made it such a joy to play because you could be aggressive and time your attacks uh, mm-hmm. really well. Is 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 Rise of the Ronin similar? Because I haven't seen that much gameplay because I do want to play this. Uh, uh, and I think I would like it. But is it a very similar system, the parry system? Is it I think that, that enjoyable? I think, uh, it is... Um, uh... It is uh, almost the same thing. The main difference, uh, the main uh, difference, I think, is that in Wulong, I think that you have a key for uh, light attacks and a key for uh, heavy attacks, right? Um, mm-hmm. But in Rise of the Ronin, you you have only one key to attack, and oh, then you have okay. and and then you have. Uh, another key for uh, defending and another key for doing the uh, um, parry system. But the problem is that because they have the defense and the parry system on two separate keys, that can make it sometimes a little bit, you know, um, weird because you are mm. trying to parry and you think that you are going to defend when you uh, parry but you don't and sometimes you are you are thinking okay what should i do now should i parry or should i uh, defend but it all comes out on uh, learning the enemy's uh, patterns just like any game just like a similar to a lot of games like that yeah, yeah games, so yeah. it's uh, but basically it's all about learning you know the enemy patterns and as i said before to unlock more uh, abilities so that you can make the combat to be more more fun but until okay. you get there yeah the game can be a little bit rough mm. yeah oh, yeah okay so, so oh well, I'll try it. I'll try it and see what it... Because it seems like a little bit divergent from Wolong in that sense. One button for attack and two parry buttons. Uh, the parry element of it is probably what entices me. But I, you know, a lot of people give... I think a lot of the shit Rise of the Ronin gets is because the console warring element. Because, well, why not? <laughs> yeah, you don't get immunity, blood. But at the same time, um, it's only a few four points below Wolong. And I'm definitely looking forward to trying it i think it's quite funny that a lot of playstation folk that are saying it's a good game are the same people who would turn their nose up at a game like this because of its visual fidelity because it's not exactly the best looking game uh and doesn't have that kind of finish and quality but the reality is it's all about gameplay yeah um mm. deadly headley what have you been playing bruv hey man um i have been playing a lot of Baldur's gate 
which I'm really, really enjoying. So um, oh, yeah. I picked up Baldur's Gate 3 uh, just as it came out onto Xbox. Um, I've, I've been obsessed with it. I really, really have. And it took me by surprise because I, I didn't think that I would like it. Um, around mm -hmm. the same sort of time I started playing it uh, a few weeks beforehand, I actually also started playing D&D &D with some friends and I think I helped sort of lay some groundwork to enjoy it. Um, that game has just fully captured me, man. I love it. Absolutely love it. That's a lot of people say that. A lot of people say that, man. Like, are, are you are you a Dungeons and Dragons nerd? Typically? No. So, so here's the thing. I am not even really a high fantasy nerd. I like Baldur's Gate ah, Three was okay. a really difficult sell for me um, because it just kind of goes against every game that I would typically go and play and sort of find myself enjoying. But I just yeah. I'm absolutely captivated with it, mate. I really, really am. Very, very impressed with it. Um, I am in. I'm in Act Three at the moment. Um, I'm not. I'm not really sure how far I am from the end. Um, I've still got like quite a few quests to sort of go and tick off, and some uh, some side quests for um, companion characters and things like that. Um, I'm just having a really, really lovely time with it. It's kind of. I'm actually, it's quite relaxing unless I'm sort of trying to figure something out or problem solving or sort of in like a, a particularly difficult um, combat situation where sort of I have to sort of problem solve on the fly or I might need to go and sort of load an, early, an, an earlier save and sort of reshuffle um, some spells or abilities or gear around or anything like that. Um, there's mm. definitely a part of me that still sort of feels like I'm like learning. Um, and again, you know, to first run through but i'm i'm already sat here going i think i want to play it again um but i i can't in good conscience do that when my backlog just keeps growing and growing and growing because i'm desperate to pick up dragon's dogma 2 i can't justify picking that up until i finish volume yeah. 3 it's <laughs> it makes sense man because <laughs> yeah. yeah bro those are big big games all of them wrong. And... Bro, the, the, the problem is trying to fit time to play these games and I have broken BG's rules in, and shattered it into smithereens as one game at a time rule. Um, Asa, you're, you're also the same guy. You play, you've always played a multitude of different games at the same time. Um, <laughs> kind of, kind so of. So normally... Today? You come from like a job interview or something. You're looking it's smart. It's because you're, no, your, um, your <laughs> connection is bad. <laughs> You just not seeing me for what I, I am. I can see yours all. fine. What is that? Is that that's your weird. podcast shirt? I've not seen the white yeah, one. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, this is the Xbox Series Show podcast it. shirt. Um, <laughs> that looks I just, nice, I did, man. I did. That looks sick. Show it. Thanks. One more time. <laughs> I'm doing the sales for you. Look, look at that. Come on, clean design. Show the people this beautiful well, project you've been working yeah. on. This. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know you're right though. Normally normally I play too many things at once. I'm well aware of the need not to. I try and have like um one kind of type of game in each different stream. So like one big single player game should be enough big single player games. One MMO is more than enough MMOs. One VR game, you know, I've got to have a VR game on the go. And then I kind of smatter in whatever multiplayer I feel like. At the moment, I've totally broken my own rules as well because I've got... I've finished um, Baldur's Gate 3 now, but I do have Dragon's Dogma and Final Fantasy Rebirth on the go at the same time, which is stupid. Um, and mm. I do have Final Fantasy 14 online going on at the moment. And I'm kind of dabbling with World of Warcraft as well, which is doubly stupid. <laughs> and then there's all the multiplayer oh, games as well. So it's like, it's a bit... I don't know. Just, I don't need to sleep. Do Who does? Bruh, yeah, man. Hey, respect your, your... I thought I was bad with the games I'm playing all over the place. You are, If you add WoW to the mix, oh my God, you are... I don't know. That's a big mistake, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, WoW Classic I or, know what, or I haven't, uh, I haven't retail dabbled well. with it yet. Um, a proper mod for the World of Warcraft VR came out this week as well, and I was like, oh, sh what the fuck? Oh, that's <laughs> you need why. To play that. You, do, oh, you need to do it on private why. servers, though. No, I haven't started that yet, but it's like, oh... Another project that I could just sink my life into. Uh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, time. That's, uh, that's the biggest hindrance. And then when you do content creation on top of it, it's just not not easy. Not easy. Um, yeah, man. Like I, like I said, I think I said the same thing last week. I'm playing a shit ton of games. Uh, so I'm playing... Um, I started playing Halo Master Chief Collection because I've completed all the campaigns on Legendary, but I haven't done them on master chief collection that have their own set of achievements right and 
bro we're doing me and my uh, and shout out to nariko uh from the community on the discord we play games now yeah uh we need to do more of that i just, I just loved it but we we're trying to get this halo master chief like all the i'm not i'm not normally achievement whore but now that i've jumped into more of a single player kind of palette as well like trying to get a broader taste i do kind of want to look at the achievements now like uh, i want to try to get that just another reason to play the halo games again and another twist on halo ce and then halo ce one of the freaking achievements is to they have this pass score thing you have a pass score to beat and if you're playing on co-op it's really hard you have to ramp up the difficulties turn off multiple skulls and it just makes the game insane like the grenades that they throw have two times radius and halo ce is the kind of which i didn't well, which i knew but you realize that the chain reaction of the grenades setting off other grenades was massively toned down after halo ce they toned that down in halo ce the grunts are the most difficult enemies in that game when you play on legendary and with that skull on because it's insane you have ones where you have to turn off the hard you, do, you you have to melee something to get your health back it's a really interesting twist on that um on on halo and it's, it's just it goes to show how incredibly well designed the gameplay mechanics of that game are because they still are fun they still can be just just as fresh today so you're right on how those play. explosion physics have changed as well because like back in back in halo ce you, you could do like crazy warthog flips and sort of create grenade piles and really just like the there was this real sort of spirit of fucking around and finding out and you you still have that to a certain degree throughout the halo campaigns but <laughs> halo c's halo c did that in a way that i, I think I don't know. Like it's it, Halo CE in a lot of ways has aged quite badly, but there are some things left over from that game that really were just sort of peak not aged badly. Yeah. It's brilliant. How dare you? Yeah, it feels I think, funky. I think that... That's my main complaint with it. Like I... compared to how fluid Halo mm -hmm. Infinite feels now, I I'd love to play a, a version of Halo um, Halo CE that had sort of been kind of that had felt modernized and kind of just sharpened up a little I still bit. Love the feel of it. Honestly, I still yeah, like you're a disgraceful one. person. Actually, um, <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, I was going to say. Actually, the first one made me realize I actually do love it. I, so with you, I, I'm with you on that because if you play it, yeah, it feels like everything is really large. Like the, everything has a little bit more weight as well, and I actually like that. I was like, it made it feel a little bit more engrossing. Like every enemy just felt. Like there's more even the assault rifle it just feels different to fire that in halo ce like because it's everything is larger and just felt like it it felt different and i think over time in their refinement to making things smoother and stuff kind of taken away a bit of the soul of that of that it's of not, halo and i just, reckon it's like um, quite bad you're right like the feeling of it is different and it had like um like some people don't like the position of the the crosshair like the reticule on it and stuff like that i much much prefer the health system that halo ce had over anything that's come since yeah um because it was just better Same. and the all of the weapons and things because like online gaming hadn't specific, like really taken off at that point all of the weapons and stuff are tuned for the campaign without really worrying about how massively overpowered they'll be in a pvp scenario so you got like a shotgun with mm. 16 shells or something silly like that so you do get to be a beast yeah, <laughs> yeah no that's so true i was thinking about the exact same things when i was playing that like but i didn't yeah you're right about the whole online thing i didn't think of that um that element of it why the, the the weapons were designed that way and you're right now that i'm listening to you about it because um the, the the needler for instance is fucking beast even on legendary like it's slower for shooting like it's changed very different like it fires like almost like bullets in the new new game but the other one is slower track but when it does hit even an elite it will destroy it and everything had a bit of weight to it which i feel like that weight is lost yeah the ragdoll physics were a bit weird i don't even know if they basically had ragdolls because you know the bodies would just die and then they would like morph into the geography to match the topography of the levels and stuff like that but that kind of jank I just, I just like it. I, there's, I'm not going to go into 
what Halo needs to do, but Halo, Halo is still Halo, and it's just timeless. Um, ranting Greek game. Are you a Halo fan? Yeah, I have played all the Halo games since they came out. I have mm -hmm. never beaten a Halo game on uh, legendary difficulty, though. Never, because I think that okay, it's... Okay, so you never played Halo, you piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> I never played Halo, no. come on. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm not judging you at all. I'm not... Because I'm, I'm even, glad my feed is blurry right now, so you can't see my face. Yeah, because <laughs> even when I tried... Because I... I I played, I played through the Halo Infinite campaign on uh, Heroic, and even that, I thought that at some points that, that it was a little bit hard, uh, especially if you remember that boss that was hunting you around with a big axe or something like that, and you have to and you had to avoid him and kill him at the same time, and I and I kill him by. That's the last boss? Him. The last boss, you mean? No, no, no. Oh, near near it, last boss, second last boss. The, uh, what's his I name? I don't remember. It the main... Somewhere in the middle of the game, before you get into a big temple of sorts, I don't remember. It's been a long time since <sighs> I played it. And it, there was yeah. um, there was a big boss that was handing me with his big axe. I don't remember the, the axe name. I'm sorry, I haven't played the game in a long time. And it, it yes, uh, one, one guy of the in the chat said uh, Tartarus, and he was Tartarus, hitting, that's it. yeah, and he was hitting me, and he was killing me with uh, one hit, that's and I was like, too. and I was like, for fuck's sake, you motherfucking boss, goddammit, I don't, <laughs> want, I don't want to play this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so you're yeah. bad at games, okay? No, I'm not bad at games. I just, I, <laughs> I have never, yeah. I simply could never understand you are going to actually kill me now. I never <laughs> understood I never understood why people play the Halo games on the legendary difficulty. I never understood why. It's one of the most because we have nerve-wracking experiences no. ever. <laughs> it's not uh, I don't know if I well like Gears of War, if you play that on the hardest difficulty, that is a pain. Like, it's like you have to learn to track the level and encounters and remember it and re-preserve ammo. Halo, uh, to a certain extent, when Halo Infinite came out, so I had... By the way, let me clarify. Blaze on the last show that he had a little bit more playtime on Halo. Then I realized, hold on, I spent a good two to three days on Halo Infinite on the uh, launch version, which is the, the which no one had because it's the review version. I'm like, you lucky shit. Uh, that doesn't get counted because it's a different little, it had a different little thing. Um, but I will say when, it, when the game launched, uh, I completed it solo uh, on Legendary. And oh, wow. that was very tough because it was designed um, for, I think, co-op play. And the, there were a couple of boss encounters where you had to fight two brutes, one on a brute chopper and shit. And that, that was annoying because there's so much scale in that game and anyone can get sniped and then that boss was just just tanky uh lots of tanking there but you know legendaries just has just become part of the canon of halo almost that experience mm. and halo's been brilliant uh for that so you know you know i sh i am very very intrigued about where the new 343 will take Halo in terms of its campaign. Because we're hearing all sorts. I think I was listening to uh, Xbox Two yesterday. Shout out to Jez and Rand. Um, and they were talking about some guy called Reb Gaming who was sharing some uh, insight into Halo um, and what happened with Halo. And apparently, uh, basically doubling down on the news that we had that the reason why uh, Halo's development was was crap was because you had no, play apparently they had no no real play testing of the campaign. They only had it like in the last three months, unlike the campaign uh, that they typically do the play testing for other games. So that internally the teams were pissed off. Like we're not doing any play testing for the campaign until the late day. And I don't, it seems like it, absolute shit show at 343 at the old 343 
So how the hell does that happen? It was just insane. Uh, insane. It explains so much when you look at how disparate Halo Infinite's campaign is. There's still so much potential. So much hard work gone into some element of it. And yet you didn't have a content plan at all for the campaign. It's confirmed. They have no nothing. And I love Halo so much. I'm such a glutton for punishment. I'm very excited about what Pierre Hintze and his team will do with the Halo. What will they do? Will we still see the Endless as an enemy? They spent so much time building that up. Like, is that going to happen? I, I'm not saying I have faith in B43. I don't even know. I can only base it on what they've done multiplayer. Single player is a whole different kettle of fish, man. And I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's one of those, like, I know, Deadly, you're a big Halo fan. Um, what, do you have any faith? Uh, are you excited about the next Halo whenever we get to see this bloody thing? Um, I, I, I'm always excited to see Halo. I like, I, I just am. Mm. I love Halo. I love the IP, and like, I, I think they have to dramatically fuck something up for that to change. Because I think at this point, the the lore goes so far back. The memories that come as part of that IP and the stories mm. that are told within that universe, um, it is something that I'm very passionate about. That said, that passion does obviously also translate into some frustration when we look at how 343, not even just with um, Halo Infinite for me, but I, I don't think 343 has properly handled Halo's campaign. I, the, since... I yep. would argue that Halo 4 was handled okay, um, but I yes. don't think it was handled as well as Reach was, or 3, or ODST. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, it, but it, it was definitely to, the, the stronger of um, what 343 have worked on since. Um, I, I'm obviously very, very disappointed, as you have been, with um, how Halo Infinite's campaign was treated, because when the expectation for halo infinite was laid out i i did expect to see um campaign content come to the uh, come to the platform that's what we were told as players and as an audience and for that to not come to fruition is is in my opinion a real shame because i think absolutely on on paper in theory the things that 343 had had laid out for infinite had they had the potential to be very good in terms of it having that sort of semi-open world type feel um even though it did feel a little bit ubisofty that opportunity for um four player co-op in in that as well which again sort of didn't ship at launch and did come later which is, is its own issue and again definitely something that 343 balls up on um i just i really want them to just not fuck it up again and i do think that yeah. I, I mean, a, every time a Halo comes out, I always think surely they're going to learn lessons from the last one. I do think that th um, 343 have had enough flack over Infinite to go, okay, we know that we can't screw this up again. I think we... We, we said the we, same thing at Halo 5, though. I know. I know we did. And Halo 5's campaign for, for me was the worst one by, by a long shot. Um, I, did, I did like the campaign for Infinite, but it just sort of left me wanting a lot more and then as that news sort of came out that it wasn't going to arrive that was really really unfortunate um i it's obviously very important for xbox as a brand for 343 to get in uh, to get halo right as well um and i i think as xbox have sort of gone through more kind of brand turmoil over the last what six months at this point um I think they recognize the importance of, of getting it right. Clearly, some of the staff changes and reshuffles that happened at 343 have benefited the multiplayer in a huge way. Um, we just need to see that translate to the campaign. Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> the guy goes, Gaz, how is it like to take Patreon money from children? What is that? What is the fuck is Halo Infinite is a joke? Okay, this is a PlayStation guy. <laughs> <laughs> the, to the tw to five people on my Patreon who are apparently children, I feel fantastic. Um, it's a weird thing. Um, it, Halo Infinite, uh, like Halo, I just feel like Halo is stuck in a in a rock and a hard place. It's the same symptom of uh, what the coalition are in stuck in with uh, 
Gears of War, where you've got very established fan base who like a particular thing, and they'll be very resistant to change or reluctant to entertain changes. And Halo community especially has a very toxic subset of uh, a fan base. I may be called that, but I, you know, I was only advocating for the game to be released in totality. I wasn't against them taking ch making changes or at least give us the base minimum of what you've given before and not and i mean they failed by their own accord to their by their own standards but if you look at listen to a halo community they are absolutely toxic people would want they just basically want halo one no sprint no nothing and it's just stupid the thing that halo infinite to the, i'm still bewildered by it because i loved the vibes of halo infinite the the feeling the the nostalgia there's mm -hmm. there was something there yeah. like i almost i even forgave some of the the lack of biomes because i thought right you've done it and it's just egregious typically you get a whole variety of biomes but i'm expecting a churn of content post launch like do you remember halo 4 and when they had the spartan ops i think it was called mm -hmm. and yeah the, every Every couple of weeks, they would release that, yeah. and they, they released that as a mini story with CGI that was so good. It was from, from Blur Studios, I think. That CGI is, holds up today, if you check yeah. it out. So I thought, one of the saddest things for me as a Halo fan is you wait, you wait, you wait years for a Halo game. And then me being me, I'll finish a Halo campaign that night in one sitting like i did that with halo 2 i was remember like it was one of the most iconic things for me man like the, the, ranting the the greek girls in my university they used to make fun of me because when halo 2 was coming out all i was known for at university was this nerd who just cry about halo all the time like halo 2 is <laughs> coming halo 2 is coming and they were like you malaga all you care about is this you don't care about us greek women who can make you uh, you know be lovely wives to you and i said no all i care about is halo, halo yeah. um and and you know they taught me stuff like and <laughs> <laughs> the Greeks, no, Elanakanomerotas, huh? Yes or no? Um, so, like that moment for me getting the steel case of Halo 2 or the bus campaign, skipping the queue because I was pre ordered it, and it was amazing, but then. I would complete it in a day and I was I felt a bit empty, a little bit hollow, like, oh shit, what now? <laughs> like multiplayer, obviously. Um, but then, you know, same thing with Halo 3. I remember it came out, I remember it like just like it was yesterday, talking about it in party chat. My friend had completed it before me and he was like, oh man, I didn't like Halo 3's campaign. I was like, what? Um, played it myself. And I always wanted a continuation of the story because Halo's lore is challenges some of the best lore out there. And I, I wanted that Spartan Ops mm. kind of thing. I'm like, you, you sold it like a live service infinite game. <laughs> Dream I think come you've, true. That's you've exactly touched what on, I want. You've touched on where they've fallen short as well because there is so much lore. There's so much opportunity. And I so think for, much, for hardcore Halo fans, the, it, Halo Infinite being set on Zeta Halo and again, Halo Infinite being pitched as something that could be added to and built on over time from a story perspective. All the groundwork, the groundwork was there, man. All the groundwork was there. Oh, everything was really there fucking awesome stories the flood is still on zeta halo mendicant flood bias is, is supposed yeah. to be on zeta halo like why aren't you doing well, offensive these bias now apparently. Oh, offensive bias thank you it's... yeah just missed opportunity look at, watch the, watch all the halo channels um like hidden xperia and others and the run up to and the launch of Halo Infinite. There are so yep. many wild theories. The Palace of Pain. That's where the Flood are. There's going to be that offensive bias or mendicant bias. Uh, offensive bias is still there. His house there. What about the other... Uh, what's it called? Um, the other... Forum. I forgot his name now. Uh, didact. The other Didact is, yeah. uh, might be oh, there. The, or, you um, know, the... uh, didn't One of them. Born Staller. Uh, yeah. The... the yeah, the OG one, they, I think. There's uh, the so many stories that they could have told. And again, you could have told those in so many different locations. There weren't any set piece um, moments, which is something that Gamsley has talked about on our show a lot as well. That was a real frustration yeah, for him. Yeah, man. Like, oh. Back in Halo 2, the the missions that were set on Earth, um, on Halo 3, some of the big epic sort of battlefield set piece moments that were there. Like, there's just anemic by comparison. And I just want them to stop dropping the ball on it. 
it's yeah man uh there's a lot of potential there and i think they'll be spurred on by the fact that the tv series is doing really well in its own right like it's really capturing the mass mark ma the masses eyes the public's eyes just very interesting because you're seeing a lot of games do that the last of us that tv show big <laughs> everyone's talking about work people who are not gamers some don't even know it's based on a game same with the witcher the witcher was one of the first ones to do it where i saw people filthy casuals talk about this and i was like oh shit they're excited and now and now i guess we can jump into this quickly the fallout tv series uh bro like everyone like this game the this tv series is really capturing the zeitgeist on the tv six as well my little brother's like yo you need to you need to apparently and i and i started for fallout 4 and I, you, you know I, I feel like i need to play complete fallout 4 before i enjoy this game my brother's like there's so many references to the fallout games in in the tv series it's amazing like the props and stuff like that like it's incredible you need to watch it and it's a really good it's sitting on like what is it? It's on R Rotten Tomatoes at ninety four percent. Like people like uh, what's his name? Um, IGN guy, the only guy who likes Xbox at IGN. A bit too much. What's Destin. his name? Destin Legary. That's it. He was just like he set the Twitter on fire by saying it's better than The Last of Us uh, a TV show, <laughs> which is like, oh, no, it's only six. It's six percent lower than us. And it's just like shut the. F I, I'm sure both are really good, um, but you know, to do, I, I didn't expect Fallout to do that well. Um, and I thought, well, it catches some of the vibes, but it looks a bit too clean. But what the everyone is saying is, it's faithful to the source material, which is exactly what they said about The Last of Us. And there you go. Don't always have to deviate from the source material, and you will have something that's good. Because the because it shows that the base story in the video game is so good and rich in its lore and its setting and its background and its intriguing characters that you can build a Hollywood rendition of this game and be faithful to the source material and impress. So I haven't watched it, but it's really good. Have any of you gents watched any of the episodes of the Fallout series? Mm, yeah, I watched the no. uh, yeah? episode. Uh, I watched. Um episode one and the one thing that amazed me about the show it is how faithful it is to the video game when it comes to the scenery and the props and the suits and the ghouls and and the weapons and just about everything it's so bloody faithful to the video game that is simply amazing it is um, it is amazing, man. I mean, even in the Halo series, you don't see such faithful recreation of a, mm. a video game coming onto the big screen. And it is amazing, man. I mean, oh my God, they are so faithful to the material of the video game that it is great. Really, really. I mean, it is really awesome. Which is, which is what a lot of detractors hated about Halo, because Halo is not faithful no. um, to its source material at all. And Hello. yet, despite that, despite that, they s seem to have been on a bit of a re recovery arc with the season two, because despite those changes, and I, I say there's a Halo faithful, I like some of the things they've done with Halo. Um, I like that they showed... Master Chief in Halo Infinite with his one line has ended up turned turned into Vin Diesel for me in the Fast and Furious movies. But he was just like this one line is like he might as well just say family at this point and I'd like not be surprised. Just say it. Because it became a bit of a meme of himself and I'm like, right, any I like any idea of depth in this character went down the toilet to me. And I really liked the Master Cheeks version, like okay, he's a little bit more human and it's but I start. I'm starting to like this guy. I start to like. There's some feeling there, and like even their uh, rendition of Reach was really good. It sold it. I liked the even that weird chick who's part of the Covenant that he smashed. Um, I thought that's an interesting little kind of twist. Like you've built up the general gist of Spartans being a bad bad badasses 
proven because they are beasts in this. The general just reach being a big loss and like a big pivotal moment for humanity. Yes, you've proven that. Halo CE, if you play the game, the story starts off with... I've kind of gone back to Halo again, sorry. But it starts off with Keys handing you over Kotana in a pretty nonchalant way and you put her in your head and you go off on a journey. Whereas with this one, Kotana has a lot more history built up and there's a lot more meaning in behind it. And even that little addition of this little mood regulators injected into the spot and so they don't feel anything. There's a lot of good, good stuff uh, in, in. Yeah, but the problem, that. in my opinion, is in my honest opinion, it is when you watch a movie or a series, let's say that, where its uh, original material comes from from a uh, a video game, you are expecting to see some sort of uh, connection between mm. the two. And with the Halo series and the Halo games and their story, I don't feel that at all. And I simply cannot watch the Halo series because of that, because it is so different from the games. I'm from uh, Master Chief. Um, I mean, you see the face of the Master Chief on the series, right? But in the games, you are slowly trying to find his uh, uh, humanity as you go through the story of the games and you're trying to see if he's, if he's a little bit more uh, a human. And, the, and then you watch the first episode of the Halo series and they say, okay, here is Master Chief, hello, and he's human and that, and it is weird. And I simply cannot accept that the Halo uh, series, that it is something that I, I simply cannot connect it to the Halo games, which I know and I love. I simply can't. I know that okay. uh, people say that it is a good show, especially the second uh, season, but I simply cannot make this uh, connection connection i cannot accept I it that's something that it is um part of the halo yeah it's not canon anyway um i do think it's a massively missed opportunity if they had a vision with halo infinite uh, a proper thought out tv series to supplement halo infinite would have been perfect but even the game didn't have a vision or even a plan so mm -hmm. what, what would be the point of the tv series the tv series is going to become more and more popular and there may be uh, pressure to align because oh. it seems a bit disparate unless it's going to be, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, be, be, what uh, is, I mean, the thing that is actually a bit uh, scary, what if we get a new Halo game in the next, in the, in the next generation of uh, Xbox and it has the voice of the guy who is playing Master Chief in the show are not the I don't usual. Mind. I do. I don't. Mind. I do. Mm -hmm. uh, you're I mean, a purist. I mean, you're there. I mean, I am master. gonna go. Oh, hey, fuck, this is no. not the, the pure Master Chief we <laughs> wanted. Yeah. Uh, in fact, actually, most people would probably hate it. Um, I don't know. Execution matters. God, Emperor Sofa King. Yes, I have read the books. I've read Reach. I've read all of Greg Bear's books, and they do a great job, an insane job of telling the stories. But the games don't even come close to doing that law justice, especially Greg Bear's books. And even the best elements of the books are resigned to the terminals in Halo Infinite, uh, Halo 4 and some of the uh, Master Chief Collection's uh, additional terminals, which is stupid. You're relegated to Easter eggs when they're so good that the core story should tell them. And the fact of the matter is, it's so badly handled that the core story starts to telling, weaving in narratives from the lore and the terminals and the main people are expected to understand what that is but hey look, but the fallout tv series doesn't seem to have any of that issue and has been close um, respecting the source material and todd howard actually i get think deserves some flowers here as well because he was overseeing this quite passionately and he said he had an idea for it so perhaps that this is a big reason 
why uh, we've got um, this kind of faithful um, TV series uh, rendition as well. Um, so yeah, like, Ace, hey, have you watched any of the Halo series? <laughs> uh, the, um, the I'm two Halo episodes series? into season one. I, I rejected it in the first place because I just wasn't that interested in something that wasn't connected to the games from what I'd heard about it. But Deadly Headley's been telling me how amazing it is for the last few weeks. Um, each Thursday comes on and tells me how it's getting better and better and better. So I've watched two episodes and I'm at the point where Rent and Greet Gamer is where I have to say the voice. I, I couldn't handle that voice coming in as, as Master mm. Chief because I actually like like the voice tells so much of the Chief's character from what we know of him so far in the games and this series good as it may get is definitely not telling the same story as the games and you can't help but as someone who's played through all of those games and read not many of the books but a little bit um, I can't give the nod to the way that the TV series is telling it because the games have done so many aspects of it better and I just I don't understand why and it may become clear to me as it goes on, but I don't understand why the, the series, if they want to go their own direction and tell their own stories, why they had to feature the Master Chief and just do a different Master Chief. Because there's there's scope within the Halo universe to tell a similar story to what they're telling around other Spartans. Yeah. And they just, like, that, that would make so much more sense to me. It would be so much less kind of... Like, offensive is the wrong word because it's just entertainment, but it would be less uh, weird yeah <laughs> i know what you're trying to say no honestly i i like what they're they're, they're doing but absolutely there's m more than enough meat on the bone there to really do halo law justice and be faithful there's so much there but apparently the developer whoever the directors were didn't even watch or care for the game or even the the story in the game which is uh which is which is not great which is not great um let me read some super chats we've got First of all, let, let, well, let me read Joseph's super chats because it's Halo connected. He goes, Halo died 17 years ago. One to three dead. What? And then he says, Halo, will you stop making me cry? Is that a, um, a take on my <laughs> altitude? Um, Halo does, will never stop making me cry because they always mess it up. Then the shout out to Face with the $50 <laughs> super chat. And it's addressed to Deadly Headley. Which is strange, because it's a very... I don't know, maybe you've talked about this before. He says, Even if GTA 6 can't run at 60 FPS on the PS5 Pro... Wait, hold on, what? Face, you were so confident it was going to run at 60... What happened here, Blood? You're... you wavering here. He says, It's still going to be the best version to play GTA 6. Just like some people who bought the One X version of Red Dead Two, because it was native 4K and the best version of the game. Yeah, um, are you contesting that? Why is that addressed to you, Deadly? Um, I don't really know why it's addressed to me. I mean, uh, first of all, thank you for the super chat. It's very generous of you. Um, I so the only thing that I think it could be is in a video that I put out. And again, thank you for the opportunity to allow me to plug content on my channel. I'm very grateful for that. Um, I put out okay. a video uh, in the last week uh, where I talked about a uh. number of things going on in the gaming industry. One of them was the fact that Digital Foundry have said that it's unlikely that uh, GTA 6 will run at 60 on the PS5 Pro, but that is the only thing that I have commented on in regards to GTA 6 and the PS5 Pro. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really sure why that's that's directed at me, but if you want to go and find out um, what I said on that and more, you can go and see that on my channel. Mm, okay. Well, look, I, I will maintain GTA 6 running on PlayStation, which won't have a PC version for at least a year, knowing how Rockstar operate, um, is a big win. Getting a definitive edition of GTA 6 on any console is a big thing if to If that runs at 60, about. yeah, that would be massive. But like literally the only comment that I've made on it is the fact that Digital Foundry said that it, it's unlikely based on, you know, this is directly from what Digital Foundry have said. If if the reality is contrary to that, then yeah, great. But you know, I've not I've not gone definitive on that to plant a flag in anything. But also, um did, did Digital Foundry do great work great great work but i would also ask people to exercise caution in treating them like gospel because digital foundry just like they're human beings man uh, they also get tend to get things wrong so you know it's not like it's 
highly unlikely in my opinion but if it does you know playstation they're wizards it's more rockstar and their appetite to really devote time to make this work at 60 fps on playstation uh, ps5 pro um but you know look face you're right generally it is is a good thing uh good night nikos um but yeah no generally it's yeah well what can you argue about it if I say, if I may say something uh, about this, um, of course, of course, like, um, you for say something? I think, uh, uh, not meaning any uh, disrespect to um, DF, but I think that they are speaking this time without having the PS5 Pro next to them, uh, next to them, and without having. Uh, GTA 6, we don't know what kind of game engine GTA 6 will have. We don't know if this game engine True. will be GPU-based or uh, CPU-based. And also, the other thing that we don't know is what kind of uh, performance the PlayStation 5 uh, Pro is going to give. Because, let's face it, the PlayStation 5 in these four years has outperformed in performance a lot of uh, xbox versions of the same games and we did and we didn't uh, and we didn't expect it and we thought that the playstation 5 that was going to be the lowest uh, denominator and it actually was that and it performs very well and in many games it performs better than the uh, series x so I believe that Mark Cerny has done his uh, magic once again, so that and I believe that GTA 6 that I'm it hes- will I'm run hesitant to give him GTA, too yes. many flowers. I think the PlayStation 5 shines particularly because of Xbox's missteps. Like X- the Series X isn't doing that well for a multitude of reasons. Yeah. I don't want to give the PS5 the consoles of too many flowers where a lot of them are cross-gen games or i i, I like the, the debate will rage on um i'm sure we'll in fact i think the most impressive part of a ps5 we have yet to see because none of these games uh, spider-man 2 you could argue i think the ratchet and clank to this day still probably stands as the best example of them rev- leveraging oh like, yeah and early on uh early on horizon i've seen the arguments it looks great it looks beautiful it's still cross-gen whatever or the the dlc isn't and that looks great um in many ways but i don't know man like there's still we know the specifications of the ps5 pro and that on that basis i'm i i i'll be surprised if anyone gets surprises it's sony so i do take your point on board why is that light turned off um but i i don't know we we, we don't know we don't know. Like, I mean, that's the thing. We, we're hot- very much still dealing in hypotheticals for a lot of this. Like, obviously, we, we, we pretty much know for almost absolute certain that there is a PS5 Pro on the horizon based on the confirmation and corroboration that we've had from people like Tom Henderson. But we, until, until Sony actually go, right, this is our hardware. This is what it does. This is how we're leveraging it. This is how we intend to run more demanding titles and sort of making sure that we are delivering a, a you know a peak experience for our user base we are still dealing in hypotheticals for a lot of this and i think in in this space we generally get far too caught up in hypotheticals without actually running with stuff yeah. that's confirmed and it just leads to speculation and bullshit it, yeah. I mean, speculation is okay because that's all you've got to is. go. Is otherwise, you'd stay mum and you're not saying anything or discuss anything. Of but course, it is. But I think like, when got a... narratives get sort of uh, narratives get sown that have very little weight or support to them because they've been spun through the lens of pure. Um, it, it's a hypothesis, isn't it? We again, you know, we're talking about whether or not. Um, there's going to be any discourse around GTA 6 running at 60 FPS. We may end up being pleasantly surprised and find out that Rockstar has managed to figure it out for the Series X as well as the base model PS5. I don't think it's likely, but it, we're still dealing with very much unknown quantities. Also, and one... Uh, I'm sorry to uh, interrupt no, you guys. Okay. 
And one other thing that, that, that I think that it is happening in, in this uh, console generation, and I wanted to talk about this, I think that game development has been weird. I think that in uh, our uh, current gen consoles, we see some great games actually uh, uh, that, that they run at uh, 60 FPS and they are uh, super clean, like uh, Horizon for uh, Forbidden West and uh, God of War and uh, Ratchet and Clank. And then you see some games whose performance mode is absolute dog shit, like uh, Jedi Survivor. And uh, recently I played uh, Alone Final in the Fantasy. Dark. And alone in the dark on my Xbox, I played it recently, and it and it is also a bit sketchy. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I don't really mind because they added a new mode, which is uh, makes the performance mode uh, visuals to look a bit better. And since it, okay. and, some, and since and it uh, looks fine, but I think that. And maybe I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit uh, overreacting by saying this, but I am going to say that I don't think that we have many good uh, developers in this generation of uh, consoles, or we don't have many developers that can actually have the knowledge to actually to bring out more uh, power out of the systems that we have. And it is weird to see that. That's a controversial some... statement. That's a controversial yeah, statement. Because, uh, because sometimes I think, okay, how do we have some uh, PlayStation 5 games and uh, Xbox games also run at 60 FPS and uh, looking great? And how come we have the other side where their performance mode looks like, to like uh, total crap? I mean, it's weird. I mean, it's like seeing two sides of the same coin, and uh, it's it's weird. I, I think that game development has something to do with it, also. I think. Um, there's definitely a disparity in the manner in which people execute, uh, the, you know, the performance and fidelity modes and these things. So they're different priorities at the end of the day. Um, you know, look. So some definitely struggle. There's the question of Unreal Engine 5. You throw that in the mix. You know, oh, you've had examples God. of... Uh, UE5 has been extremely demanding. Um, yeah, you had Blake's... I think it was a Blake Dale running on UE5. Um, and there's a lot of guesswork. You're right, Deadly. Um, Acer, a lot of people are running with a narrative or assumption that this game is going to be heavily CPU intensive. Uh, for GTA 6, that is. And that's the reason why we're guessing that, you know, there's no way or Digital Foundry is saying it's highly unlikely that the PS5 Pro will run this at 60 FPS. Um, well, what's your take on that? And then we're going to ask you about your take on devs generally being, being shit like uh ranting gamer is saying they suck. um so the, the gta thing we've spoken about it before but i think it's been covered here as well already um there's a lot of assumptions being made and digital foundry didn't plant their flag firmly saying it's definitely not 60 either they caveated that all over the place um because we don't know what the base consoles are okay. going to do rockstar have typically been wizards if you look at the cpus in the xbox one and the playstation 4 they managed to do Red Dead Redemption 2 with that. So how yeah. far are they pushing and what are they pushing with Grand Theft Auto 6? Can they manage 60 frames per second on the Xbox Series X on the PlayStation 5? From the trailer, it looks like there's an awful lot of NPC activity and it's reasonable to question and assume that they can't, but we don't know. And then the whole question yeah. has just changed because, like, yeah, maybe a CPU bound. And we know that the PlayStation 5 Pro is going to have pretty much more or less the same CPU. There's also the um, the Dark Horse being the um, the AI upscaling chip. Nobody yet knows for sure whether that does frame generation or not, mm. which would obviously change the answer as well. And Digital Foundry cited both of those, both of those things being like, well, this is the unknown entity. This is what could change everything. But we've just got um, to wait and see because all we've got is these assumptions and speculation at the moment. Absolutely. What about your take on Radin Green Gaming makes an interesting point about the fact that we're seeing consistency in 60 FPS um, on, on the one hand. And Face, thank you for the $20 super chat. He also says, here's a fact. There are no PS5 exclusive games that run at 
only the FPS. Sony gives their customers options, unlike Microsoft. So uh, just on that super chat and the fact that there's a disparity in which developers are achieving 60 FPS across the board. What's your observation on that? I, I would never come forward and say that the developers are terrible at their jobs or anything along those lines because I don't think that's that's particularly fair unless you can like you have to have a benchmark to be able to say that so unless you can find a load of developers where you're saying actually like this is the standard we should be seeing and everybody else sucks um, even then that would be a pretty harsh kind of analysis of it but for me um, yeah. I mean it's fair what Face is saying is fair the PlayStation has offered 60 frames per second in everything that they've released and they've made it a priority they've put those demands out on their developers but we know that PlayStation are pretty like demanding in terms of the type of games that their developers deliver as well um, like yeah. we know that, that they're not taking risks they have this like you're going to hit this particular bar and you're going to hit it in this particular way and you're going to hit this score on Metacritic and we know that that's not Microsoft's approach in the same way and there are pros and cons to both approaches because Sony's one does yield great yes. results but we also like that Microsoft take, take risks if Hellblade 2 turns out to be phenomenal we don't want them to step in and say no you've got to deliver it as XYZ you've got to hit this particular target because this is what we've told our players we don't want mm -hmm. them to be heavy handed and for years for years when they had all of their studios they hardly had any and they were known as doing um, Forza, Gears and Halo and Microsoft were so criticised for being too heavy handed with the developers and making them deliver just this and this and this <laughs> And then, like, they give them some freedom, and now we're like, no, it's too much freedom. You need to make them give us 60 frames per second. And everything. <laughs> it's, it's not like it's not like that. It's just it's more complicated. Yeah. And I, I welcome both approaches, honestly. But on the 30 frames per second right thing, though, there. I will say Microsoft are like they, they are due some criticism. I actually I said last week for me, Hellblade 2 being 30 frames per second, I think that is the correct target for the console hardware. I think they're making a smart decision, but I don't think they made a smart decision with Redfall or Starfield. I don't think that those should have been mm. Oh, Starfield um, either. I don't think Starfield should have been 30. No, I think they should have made compromises to the lighting to however many yeah. potatoes you can have if it meant that you could play first person 60 frames per second. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it was the correct target for that game. And these things have built up and put undue pressure on, on Ninja Theory because I actually don't think their decision is in the same ballpark. That's a very well said i think i think you're By the right way, if i, I may my... if i may add one more thing and i will uh, shut up about it uh about, no, no, about no. the game development and things um the reason why you are seeing me being so skeptical about game development and uh, and about game de developers in uh, mostly about game development and the tools that they that, that they are um, using last summer i came across an uh, article from an Italian developer who uh, who they were comparing the uh, the Unreal Engine 4 to the un, Unreal to the Unreal Engine 5 and what they found out and I actually went to the Unreal Engine uh, forums and I found out that it is true the Unreal Engine 5 out of the 16 uh, th threads sorry that the PlayStation 5 CPU has or the Xbox CPU has because they both they both have 8 cores and 16 uh, threads the Unreal Engine 5 by default is uh, using only one out of the 16 only one and game developers from what I read have an issue to make the um, the uh, the Unreal Engine 5 to use more of the cores and the threads on the CPU in order to split the tasks that that, that their game engine uh, has to do. So it is also. I mean, but that's across the board, right? Multiple devs then are you yeah. suggesting are not using the other threads? What? So, but th there surely is a. It may not be worth the effort, or maybe it might be a difficult task. I mean, I mean what I want to say is, if we see some bad performance coming from the uh, from the Unreal Engine 5 games, it it because the Unreal Engine 5 has such bad CPU optimization and uh, mm -hmm. multi-core optimization, and I heard something that they are doing this because Epic Games wanted to keep backwards compatibility with uh, a Fortnite, and they wanted 
to take Fortnite from the 4 engine to the 5 engine in the smoothest way possible without having, you know, to change to, to um, uh, change things. M- massive changes to the engine, but then are you says are you saying that because of that the tool so your issue is more with your Unreal Engine 5 and not the developers using Unreal Engine 5? Am I uh, it is mostly a bit of both. Uh, I think it is the Unreal Engine 5 also be, I believe that it is a not a good uh, game. Uh, it is an really? engine that it is not finished yet in my opinion. Mm. And second of all, I blame the developers. I don't mean bad things about the developers, by the way. He I hates want you, developers. No, Your no, hard no, no, work no. sucks. He doesn't no, no. care. I'm, I'm not kidding. saying I'm that. Joking, it's just that when you see a, a Sobo studio coming out back in, when it was when? Uh, 2022, September, when Plague Tale... Rec VM came out and they said that they couldn't do 60 FPS on the consoles. And then they come out in May 2023, if I remember well, and they say, oh, look, we fi- we finally managed to give uh, 60 FPS on the game consoles. Yay. Or with uh, Larian Studios also, when they say, we are sorry, but we cannot port Baldur's Gate 3 onto, onto the Xbox uh, Series S because of this and that. And then a couple of months later, you hear you hear them say, not only we managed to port uh, Baldur's Gate 3 on the uh, Series S, but it actually helped us on general game development. So it is yeah, what the I PS5 said. Yeah, version of it benefited as well. But didn't didn't they? Well, correct me if I'm wrong. With 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 Larian Studios and Baldur's Gate three to get it to work on the Series S, did they have to like get rid of the? Yeah, they had to get. Uh, yeah, they yes. had to get rid of the split string and they had. Yeah, they had some. That's a little bit different. They had to make a sacrifice there. I, I, I mean, that's what I mean when I say that game development in in this generation is weird because. At first, they tell us that they can't do some some things, and then they come out a few some, and then they come out a few months later, and they say, "Oh, okay, we we can uh, actually do this," and it's and it's weird. It's really weird. That's what I find, you know, weird, and that's why I am uh, complaining. And that's I, you know, I'm sure that there's an argument there as well. A lot of people, a lot of developers are making like churning out games that seemingly unfinished, and then they get sorted out later. There's an argument to be made there, and I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. Um, I think there's definitely an argument to be had, and I do feel like it's quite a controversial thing to say. Oh, the developers are lazy, but I do feel like sometimes developers do take the path of least resistance, whether or not it's justified or not, on a dev by dev basis. We'd have to go through games on you know one by one and make that have that discussion. I don't know if that's an interesting one, but no, Jen, I take your point on board, and you're right. There, there's lots of examples there, and you mentioned two good examples really with the Plague Tales Requiem. Only a few months later, they boom magically 60 fps when we're told it couldn't do it so that was a bit of an oddity so i think that there is meat to that bone there yeah absolutely uh let me read some super chats we got joseph walder thank you with the multiple super chat he goes todd howard looks like mick hickman stunt double i don't know who that is i don't know who that is gents i don't know if you guys know who that is um joseph walzer says at blue moon that's three to four more than xbox i'm talking about 60 fps games and we've got valhalla the last of us to remaster hell what hd2 i don't wish that is final fantasy 7 rebirth with a shitty resolution and not even perfect performance mode R O T R, which was surprised what's R O T R? Rise of the Ronin. Shut the fuck up, Xbox Cricket. Joseph, you got at least name some good games. Come on, bruh. Uh, there's a weak ass uh, list there of 60 FPS games. Um, but, you know, we can say developers are lazy. 
we can say they may not be great at leveraging tech or they may be wrong for using Unreal Engine 5 for the reasons that RGG mentions. But what about developers that are greedy? And here comes Ubisoft <laughs> and Star Wars Outlaws. Apparently, this is, I'm not saying they're greedy, but I'll leave it to you, Jen, to talk about this. Star Wars Outlaws. When it first got shown off, people said, hey, it looks really good. Great gameplay showing was brilliant. Quite positive, really, and, and it was quite impressive. They'd taken the torch away from EEA and delivered a single, or shown off a single player uh, Star Wars game that looked brilliant visually and whatnot. Seemed like it was really interesting. And this week you had a myriad of controversies for a multitude of reasons. One of them was the fact that you need an internet connection to install the game. Um, <laughs> even though you bought the physical version. I feel like this is getting more and more common now. I'm all digital, so I don't give a shit. But Deadly, is this is this an issue? Should we, like, is this part of the course now? People are still crying. Is it just a case of people going, wah, wah, or is it actually justified in their beef? I think, so specifically the um, needing an internet connection to install the full game, I think that, that probably comes down to the fact that they can't fit the full game on a disc. Um, obviously, we, we've seen um, Larian put um, Baldur's Gate 3, or they're in the process of putting Baldur's Gate 3 on several discs. So if they were really were committed to preserving that, phys that physical edition, they could do. Um, but I, I think, you know, the, was it Matt Piscatella sort of shared some figures around where digital sales versus physical sales are at at the moment and digital is just massively outweighing um physical by a by a long way right now um i, I think like just i know there is a physical crowd and i i hear that physical crowd and i respect that physical crowd for wanting that kind of consistency in that game preservation but the the mass market the casuals most of us here on podcasts and things like this we we own digital partly because it means that we can play it in more than one place if we want to um so i've mm. talked before about how like if i wanted to play Baldur's gate 3 um remotely um from my xbox and i didn't have that disc in my console at the time. I've got to call somebody up. I've got to go and call my missus up and be like, hey, babe, can you can you stick that Baldur's Gate 3 disc in my Xbox so that I can I can play it remotely for like an hour? And then maybe if I want to play something yeah. else, you can go and do that. Like, fuck that. We, we, we've moved so far beyond Spoiled. being yeah. tethered to physical media, but I completely understand that there is rightfully a want and a drive to preserve that like i, I get it but me personally but i'm more than happy just owning my stuff digitally if you can call mm. it owning because i appreciate that there are you know some nuances to that terminology specifically but i think for the most part yeah. i i feel there's obviously a, a great degree of trust that has been put in these companies by consumers, and rightly so, because it's where we're spending money. Um, I think something catastrophic would have to happen for you to completely lose access to that game that you have spent digital money on, mm. bar you selling yourself out of the ecosystem that you bought it in, which comes down to consumer prerogative above anything else, which is one of the reasons why Phil Spencer has sort of cited that that disparity between PlayStation users and Xbox users is really difficult to correct now because people have built their digital libraries. It sort of was probably an mm. unintended consequence of moving to a more digital focused space. And I don't think either, either manufacturer at the time was probably thinking this was where it was going to go, but it has. That's... It is well, just the world we're living. Microsoft in. were very they were far they ahead were. of the game. You're they right, even had that digital edition. They were yeah. like all in and people didn't want weren't ready. Mm. To the point I was where the actually marketing campaign PlayStation that. was literally <laughs> handing over a play a physical disc. Yeah, um, I, I was more than and yeah, I was with you. I was uh, there with there as well. Yeah, I was okay I, with it. I was okay with to it. a certain degree. I didn't like the mandatory sign in though. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I was I was I was uh, I was accepting it because I'm like, okay. But give us the details. How's the family sharing actually going to work, Major Nelson? Uh, but they never told us. So they, they they were ahead of the game, but without any details. So it's just freaking Microsoft down to the core. Asa, is this just a, an expired whinge now? Or is there meat to this? Getting physical games not requiring a mandatory online download. I feel like it's a... Uh, it's like... 
You know, it's not an issue that impacts me very much either because I've been digital for a very long time, but I've always kind of respected and appreciated the people that want that physical version. The challenge really is um, what Ubisoft are providing here is not a worthwhile physical version. They're doing it because they know that there is that demand. There are people that will throw a massive tantrum if they don't get their physical version, perhaps rightly so, but what they're delivering doesn't include the whole game. So they're not really satisfying any of the vocal groups in particular by doing this. I don't really know what the right answer is for them though. Like, do you do the full game on two discs and, and bump the price up? Because you're going to get backlash for that as well if the physical version costs like 80 quid or whatever. Um, yeah. So they're kind of, they're a little bit between a rock and a hard place and I don't have that much sympathy for them because they're charging lots and lots of money for this game. So really, it's for them to go and work out. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Do you care about this Ranting Green Gamer? <laughs> I think that here, I think that here in my country, in Greece, I think that we care because here in mm. in Greece we feel very strong about um, um, retail. And believe it or not, here in Greece, gamers buy their games mostly on uh, retail and not on uh, a digital. Oh. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, I mean. I even have a tough time, you know, saying to my to the to the gaming uh, communities here. Look, I mean, uh, uh, PSN Plus has these uh, discounts, and you can get these games cheap. And they say to me, No, no, I want to get to get the game and the disc actually in my hand and to put it into my system. So. Mm. Yeah, but the problem is that, as you guys say, time, times have changed. I think that what Ubisoft is doing is not something that we haven't seen before because every time that, I, I mean, every single time when I buy a game for my Xbox or, uh, or my PlayStation 5 and, that, and uh, that game is on a disc, about 99% of the times I will have to download something in uh, order for the game to play, right? So what this Ubisoft is doing is not something that we are not doing all already, but yeah. uh, it's bad because you buy the physical release and you actually haven't uh, bought it. Not the game, though. It's, it is, weird. Uh, it's like almost it is halfway, halfway there. Else. I mean, it is like you are you are paying full price for uh, half the game and the other or half. No game at all, unless or, you... or no game at all. Oh, yeah. So it is weird. And by the way, I come from a time because I am that old, and I come from a time. Look here, where games actually were full in their discs and with fucking game manuals also sorry oh so, good times so good i come times. from I remember this, those cases uh, era also so um yeah uh but it no absolutely it, but this is how things It's really go. good to get good to get an opinion. See, normally we have to like guess from the US and the UK, right? And here you come from good old Greece and then you say that most people like because yeah, it's so good for in, us to be in our Yeah. Especially the That's crazy. That's a very especially interesting. Especially the Sony crowd here in Greece. We love our games to buy our games on uh, retail, honestly. We really, really do. Mm, I mean, that's good. people that's want to have a big uh, bookcase with their PlayStation 5 uh, titles, you know, uh, like this, lined up. So, yeah. Mm, I understand that. That's very, uh, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Because if it, you weren't here, we would have probably said, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, but it is because that's how the, the vast majority of Greeks actually purchase their games. So it's, you shouldn't be no. dismissive of that. I know um, I look young, but I also do keep some physical games around as well. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh but, my like, God, bravo. In Ubisoft's like slight defense, they're far <laughs> from the first ones to do this, right? There are, there are lots yeah, of publishers that, that currently do disc-based games, including Microsoft themselves. You buy an Xbox game, it's pretty rare that the game is on that disc, or at least the, the series version isn't on that disc. So 
I mean, probably a little bit of flack that they don't deserve for doing what the rest of the industry is doing, but I don't mind people arguing about this thing if it's important to them. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that De Silva in the chat goes, Kupo, uh, taking it away from uh, Yazani. Um, another bit of contro controversy. Now, this one, this one has some more teeth into it, I would say. The uh, pricing and this season pass for the single player game. So there are a multitude of different editions, which this is something I don't really like. You've got your standard edition, which is the base game, and you get the Kessler Rudder bonus pack. Then you've got the gold edition, which is $40 more than the $70 base price. And then you, what do you get? Three days early access, because that's a thing now ever since i think falls or whatever and a season pass for a single player game again what are you getting this thing then you get the ultimate edition which is a hundred and thirty dollars and with that you get the base game the kessler runner bonus package you get with the standard stuff you get the same three day early access and season pass you get the rogue infiltrator bundle a sabbat Sure, I want to spat that out there. Short bundle and digital art book. Not even a physical art book for 130 quid or dollars. You just get a digital art book. Uh, and a, bruv, if at one time, if you were spending that much money, bruv, you would get a hand job as well as a sick statue made that's physical, that's real. They're, you're not even getting that. You're not even getting a massage. You're getting the digital art. That's not here steak surely chat tell me who likes that because that pricing is horrible and then on top of this like, they've got this infographic here and they've got all these standard gold ultimate and you know where they're going with this because on the far right they've got acer covered with day one with ubisoft plus and then they've got that's what they're peddling highlight in there and they said you get all of it because it's all digital in our subscription and they're trying to funnel people into the uh, Ubisoft Plus thing. So, well, they're, they're trying to get people, desperately enticing people into the digital uh, subscriptions uh, thing. And they're also taking the piss because as soon as they get hands on Star Wars, they're gonna rinse you dry. Come on, Acer, this one takes the piss but you're lucky because you have ubisoft plus i do have ubisoft plus actually i was saying on um thursday i'm actually not that bothered by this the, pr the way that they're pricing these extortionate digital editions shit. not because i get them on that other service but because the way i see it if you're gonna like extort money from people that have too much money have at it i don't really care about that so long as i'm not missing out <laughs> and the normal players aren't missing out so they could charge 500 quid for a useless digital edition if it doesn't include anything that i feel like i'm missing out on you know skim skim that from the people that have got it i take that over like trying to squeeze that money out of the people that don't have it the people that just want to play the game on the base edition mm, that's true. I, I don't it's not as bad. It's not the most egregious thing that we're facing in the industry, as far as I'm concerned. Apart from, I think it does include that in three days early access. And that yeah, bit, pricing. The, the, the early access, that is playing on a nasty kind of FOMO that I'm not a big fan of. But. Because we so saw it in the digital Starfield, and it was for very successful. Quid. Fine, I don't even want it. That's fine by me. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, like, the digital art book reminds me of those uh, NFTs they were selling almost. It's like that kind of shit. It's a bit of a bad vibe. The three-day early access, if this becomes more and more prevalent, then I just... The, they're really, really rinsing the, the FOMO crowd to the point where, you know, Forza, did, I think, did this, and you had Starfield, and now you've got... This becomes more of a thing. I'm like, mm, I don't know. And I'm one of the kind of person who would actually end up paying for just the early access, especially if you're a content creator, right? And you will want to cover stuff. YouTube's algorithm is so sensitive that you want to, if you don't want to be buried because you're competing in a highly saturated space. So, you know, they, you know, they're going to keep doing this. I just find the fact that Star Wars and Ubisoft, they do it and they just right off the bat, take the piss. Um, gents, uh, Deadly. What do you think about this? So, I, I think okay. I'll I'll start with I'll start with the early access thing. Um, 
And actually, a uh, quick shout out to um, Mag from Colt Eastwood's podcast, XNC, uh, because I think he's he's kind of hit the nail on the head in terms of what studios are having to do to squeeze that extra revenue out. And I think I'm sort of I'm I'm in the same camp as Acer in terms of saying like, if ye, if there are people who want to be squeezed and they're happy to be squeezed for X amount of more money, like that's their prerogative to be squeezed um i think the <laughs> phrasing and um, <laughs> the I, so mag has said about how like um the the cost of the cost of development is obviously challenging across the board we've seen that all over the industry especially with um some of uh, playstation's to cinematic first party stuff um spider-man 2 costing to 300 mil to um develop and get out the door i wouldn't be surprised if um similarly ubisoft would have also had sort of additional licensing costs and stuff like that obviously to use the star wars ip and those those costs rack up massively and we're seeing that as an issue across the board in the industry right now so Mm. obviously that kind of those development costs need to be covered and the way they're going to be covered is by adding extra stuff that is quote unquote optional for players to buy but (laughs) i think the the foam Again, I sort of have mixed feelings about the FOMO tactic um, because I I very much liked having that option to play Starfield early. I jumped on that because I was really, really excited about Starfield. Where I think Xbox managed to handle that quite well, though, is um, because Starfield was launching into Game Pass, actually the only thing, if you were a Game Pass subscriber and you were going to play Starfield on Game Pass anyway, was you could pay for that early access and you did get uh, the Shattered Space DLC with it as well and some other bits too. Um, That value proposition was much more palatable whereas with the Ubisoft game you are looking at full whack or like we said looking at Ubisoft Plus. I think the Ubisoft Plus is quite an interesting move and to be honest i'd i'd be tempted by it like i'm not i'm not a huge ubisoft game fan um i've talked before on the on the xbox series podcast about how i don't typically suffer with um choice paralysis unless i'm looking at my xbox hard drive and i'm sort of trying to figure out which game to play and which game to remove to play other games because that's getting stressful um but when i look at a ubisoft style map i very quickly sort of go man there's so much to do i don't really know how much of it i want to do because it just sort of feels like the task list is is too big um so from from that perspective as with how game pass works your experience with outlaws is relatively risk-free if you want to go and just try ubisoft plus for a month um and you know you can sort of make your own mind up as to whether or not you want to own that digitally and pay the rest of the money um or or pay the money for the game so that you could just play it to your heart's content without it being on a subscription service um the studio is gonna have to make their money that's kind of that's where i'm at well yeah no fair enough what do you think about that ranting like this is it the what deadly suggesting well this is part of the course it's a sign of the times yeah, as uh, they said, it is a sign of the times. I mean, I'm a, I'm afraid that this is how things are going to go from now on. And um, well, while as I said before, I don't actually mind because it is something that we have seen before. Uh, but as uh, they said, they have to do something so that if they are going to charge you more for a game or say they have to give us something more in order to justify all the prices that they are putting on they have to give us something more something more i mean i'm a huge uh, star wars fan and i can't wait for the game because everything star wars related i'm a i'm a fan but 
they really have to give us something more. I mean, back in the old days, when you when you would get the deluxe version of a game, you 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 would get a steel book and some extra things in uh, in it and things like that. They have to give us something more and also something that we can uh, actually touch. touch. Something, yeah, yeah. Uh, some, some things that we can touch. Not something, I mean, uh, saying that they are giving us a digital uh, art book, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to go and click through the pages of a digital uh, art book. No. You can just download that. Surely uh, yeah, someone's going to upload that. I'm not going to do that. So they have to give us something more if they are going to. And if and if games will get more uh, expensive in the next generation of uh, consoles, then give us something more. Give us something more. I mean, we we wait and wait for the games to come out. We suffer through patches and uh, bad bad uh, performances of the games and things like that. Give us something more. Something more meaningful. <laughs> If no, you are I, going I, 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 to I agree. charge that much, I think so. I, 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 I hope I'm, they I'm don't. in your camp. Like, there. I, I hope that they don't know because then I'd be enticed to buy it and I don't want to spend that much on a game. So, so just keep putting frivolous <laughs> shite in there and I'm all right with the high price. <laughs> <laughs> as long as the base price is okay with the content. We haven't really talked about the. Uh, the game itself though like uh, i'm not gonna get into the whole controversy about the way the woman looks and all of that um it is a bit weird that the actors don't seem they base the game on actors and the actors seem i, I feel like if i was the actress there and i've been hard done by because you you've taken my base face added a bit of like a bum chin and then just made me look a little bit more butters in the game and then you know if you're the actress like this me like vain person like why do i look even more butters in the game than i do in real life and she's very pretty accurate. listen to but you with debate. you i'm not going to go into it and then offering up your terrible take <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't help it i couldn't help it but i mean we all see it, man. We've seen the memes out there. It's just like, I, I'm just seeing it from the actress perspective. Like, I'm not getting into the whole spiel about the agendas and whatnot. But maybe I should. No, I, I'm not. I'm not, not going to do that. It just, it, I looked at it. I'm like, oh, it's one of those. Um, but at the same time, I'm just thinking more about the game. Because when Ubisoft it shows off very well visually and, you know, I'm still burnt by watchdogs so badly from ubisoft so badly that i can't get over it um and i don't think ubisoft ubisoft deliver beautiful games actually they get a lot of credit uh, a lot of murkage because they because of watchdogs rightfully so but if you look at the far cry games very beautiful they i haven't played it but the avatar game is supposed to be one of the most impressive looking games and this one looks really really good do we know about the performance of this game? Like, is it running at 60 FPS? Is it got a fidelity and performance mode? Um, I don't think they've clarified I yet. I mean, the tra I mean, those actors in the Avatar game must have been pissed with their faces being all blue and stuff. But that aside, um, Avatar performed really so well on the consoles and had quality and performance modes. comparisons to Avatar <laughs> and blue faces. Oh, no, I'm just looking at it Shut from the actor's up. perspective. From what? the actor's perspective, they're good looking. They're not, they don't have blue faces. But it looked the same. Jake Sully <laughs> looks like Jake Sully, just blue, bro. <laughs> Didn't change it at all. Let me add the change. Fuck your teeth up a little bit, and boom, uh, you are in the game, looking like a plasticine so, model cell. So yeah, player. Avatar Come performs on, really man. well on the console. Sixty frames per second, if you want it, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and it's a good-looking game. So I imagine Star Wars Outlaws is going to have the same performance options. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, it looks really, really good. It looks really. Can't believe trying to compare um, Avatar. That's just no. <laughs> That's not happening. No, my watch on that front. There's just a false, false equivalence there. But um, in terms of the gameplay, it's open world, isn't it? Like, well, semi-open yeah. world. So we're gonna get the Ubisoft bloat. Yeah. Um. That's where I, I, I I'm like, this price tag what like the season pass for a single player game i don't know man i'm just gonna be look at the same time i think ubisoft know that they have a lot of pressure right now internally the studio has a lot of pressure 
anyway. We know that from Yi Gilmont, or whatever you pronounce his name. Uh, they he said that they're just pushed. They are they are on critical mode. Um, they've landed this Star Wars IP, so they have to get it right. With Avatar, they clearly did not even sell remotely close to what they wanted. Um, even though they may, own, they didn't really hit the critical acclaim mark there as well. So part of me is thinking this is going to be a good game. You're a big Star Wars fan, ranting Greek gamer. Yeah. Take away your lightsaber from your ass and just tell me <laughs> objectively, without being a Star Wars nerd, is this game looking good to you though? And if so, what kind of meta predictions? That's it. I'm gonna put you in the hollow meta prediction <laughs> conversation so I can put we can make fun of you when you get it wrong. Where's this thing? What do you think? Oh, Talk okay. to me. Based on my past Ubisoft experiences, I think that the gameplay is going to be somewhat more or less what we have experienced from previous uh, Ubisoft games. I don't think that we are going to see many changes there. What intrigues me it is, I don't know if you remember in the demo that was shown during the Xbox uh, showcase last summer, the spaceship of the player took off from the planet and went into space without any yeah. cutscenes or bullshit. So I'm yeah. really excited to see how that is going to work out. Be there if at all, if at all. If yeah, at all. I'm really interested to see how that is going to uh, work out. And the other thing that, that I am excited about is this, is it um, you explore an, an uh, entire planet and there are many different uh, planets to explore and if we take into consideration how big all the maps in all the Ubisoft games are I think that we are going to have a really really huge game I think in my opinion oh. which which I really don't mind because as I said I love Star Wars and I have a lightsaber up, uh, up my ass <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah, I am really yeah, excited. Uh, uh, now. now, as for the main character, because people have been speaking about the main character looking weird, to me she looks like a female Luke Skywalker from the 70s which I really don't mind, to be honest with you. I think that they tried um, to combine some of the old look feel of the Star Wars characters from the old movies and also put in some, uh, something new into the character, mm. which I really don't mind about. I don't have any problem with uh, game characters. But I did have a problem with the game characters in uh, Avatar. They looked so bloody weird. Did they? Uh, they looked so bloody weird to me. Oh my god, I couldn't so bloody weird. I couldn't get used to them at all, at all. Oh, uh, why? You don't like Smurf? I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't get used to it that I am controlling an avatar giant thingy that it has a long neck that is like 10 feet long and it looked weird. I couldn't get used to it at all. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Yeah. I will but say anyways, this about looks. Yeah, I have no problems with the Star Wars game. It looks amazing. Expect, expect for the price, which is we talked about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I, I will say on the looks thing, I think it's been a bit overblown. I think the disparity between the main actress and that is what maybe fueling a lot of the flame, but she's a perfectly reasonable like you could say she's that's beauty subjective she looks okay it's not okay yeah, it's she, just the actress okay, okay. to the thing point i think there's this uh there's like a chip on the shoulder of a lot of fans who um just want to get eh, agenda and too much and cry about it. and i'm like i'm fucking done with this argument give me some good gaming news so you're not crying about why the women look weird all the all the time yeah. i'm not saying there's no argument there or whatnot She's okay. She's, in some bits, she doesn't look great, but who cares? Like, uh, you know, just fuck it. Um, I, I don't care. Anyway, you can care all you want. Um, <laughs> comments are disgusting. Um, but, well, what do you think, Deadly? Do you think this game is going to smash it 
it looks like the gameplay is up on screen right now and it looks really good uh, but very what we're curated right now very looks, what we're seeing right now looks really really promising um i i think i like like you i also was burned heavily by watchdogs and that trust yeah. in ubisoft hasn't fully returned since i was so pissed when i started playing yeah. that game i was like this is this is not what we sold we obviously this is footage from over a year ago um we don't know what might be coming down the track in terms of official downgrades or whatever we also haven't really seen any of the ubisofty bloat in in practice yet um so i'm interested to see how that comes across um mm. but generally i'm i'm looking forward to this i think it looks really really good um it looks really again, good gameplay wise looks a bit it does what it looks are you gonna a bit say sterile to me though do you think I just so think it's just like i, I, I think it's just like I, I think it being set in a star wars uh in a Star Wars universe, the sort of the openness of this particular scene that we're seeing on screen at the moment. I quite like the fact that there we've seen some diversity in gameplay. So we've seen some vehicle um, gameplay. We've seen um, space combat. We've just seen um, obviously a, a big sort of shootout scene. Um, I it it's definitely piqued my interest for sure. I am I am looking forward to checking it out. Um, I'm still undecided about how yeah. I'm going to play. Honestly, I think I think I'm just going to give it a go on Ubisoft Plus because I I think like that yeah. for me is especially with like how many games there are to play at the moment, um, I, and to how many <laughs> how many games I still want to buy and I haven't bought them because I know I then need to commit the time. Um, if I want so to get the on, planning this has game, worked. It's, yeah. it, that's the thing like if i if i start feeling fomo if i then sort of and obviously you know being on a podcast circuit it's kind of important that we play games that are current and that's not always doable depending on how your wallet's feeling that month or what your backlog is like um i think yeah. for me to have the opportunity to just go fuck it i'll spend 15 quid and i've got i've got a month to play um star wars outlaws because it's not a live service game i and I'm, I'm dubious of why there is a season pass in there i think like generally they just sort of i don't know it's a single player game why are we doing this um but you know i'm, yeah, I'm not really saying that i don't need to i'm gonna pick it up i'm gonna treat it like a single player cinematic game and i'll probably just park it when i'm done and if i really 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 like it then i can either buy it at the end of the time that i spent on ubisoft plus or i can buy it on a sale depending on on you know what my thoughts on it were i, I do really appreciate the fact that that risk-free or fairly risk-free option is is there because um, again, like you yeah. have been burned on paying uh, full price for a Ubisoft title. Fucking Watchdogs. <laughs> yeah. Piece of yeah, shit. Br- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, that was horrible. Uh, uh, for me, it just lost a lot of trust. Um, mm. The way they sold it so confidently. Um, yeah. You're right about the whole subscription thing. I'm starting to do that now uh, with TV. Uh, I'm c- cancelled my Paramount Plus. My subscribe to Disney Plus to watch X97, which I hear is amazing. And Shogun, I think, is on, on Disney Plus. Mm. And I'm going to be a little bit more discerning instead of letting these subscriptions run wild. Um, and at 15 quid for whatever it is for Ubisoft Plus for a month, if I'm going to devote my time just playing one game which is not me uh it would be a good a smart play you have the option you have the option mm. so despite like asa says it's not the most egregious example of uh, microtransactions now uh this topic is going to ruffle people's hair or in the Marseille's case, his scalp. Um, <laughs> with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth sales, uh, he apparently is reportedly reportedly um, sold two million copies based on player data. Now I'm sure Art Hagi will have a uh, a view on that, um, and I don't think that that's high um, at all. Uh, for this franchise of this pedigree if it's true there's a big if there right but then we've had z z huge x whose name is daniel ahmed i don't know who he writes for but he's blocked me i think he's a bit of a pony actually um i think yeah z huge x is a massive pony uh depends otherwise but either way he did say 
Uh, people are saying, oh, what's the big deal? Uh, also, not to be that guy, but Rebirth is underperforming sales-wise. Not that sales performance related to what the guy said, lol. Um, um, and then he says, it's selling about half of what Remake sold in the same time frame. And it looks like it'll have a weaker tail prior to any PlayStation Plus release. <sighs> Asa, your favorite game which you is not your favorite but you like to play it because it's final fantasy even though it does things that you don't like like it does in other games and you're there collecting random shit do you think there's this is significant do you think it's expected are the reports exaggerated do you love do me you know, find out in the next I'm, episode I'm of very Dragon Ball Z. very consistent in that yeah sure i love you and i do not give a shit about sales figures um they <laughs> they impact me if it means that i'm not going to get well, the next part of a game and it's one of those things like obviously the conversation going around it is like is this because of sony's marketing agreement have they destroyed final fantasy and ip by making it exclusive how much better would the numbers be if it was yes. on xbox and pc and all the rest of it right um and like, i want the game to do well enough for them to finish the trilogy so it's like I don't know. They're going to do that, right? And that is that because of the marketing agreement, they can't get out of part yeah. three now because it's already paid for. So, mm, I don't really mind. I don't like the marketing agreement. I don't like the exclusivity. I don't like that I can't play that game where I choose to play it. At the same time, I don't care how much it's sold so long as I get the last part. Does that make well, sense? That's I think a it makes sense. Good attitude to have. <laughs> it, it it does make sense. But what about the? Uh, you may not care, but it will have wider ramifications. One of them being potentially not getting a third, which it will. It will get a third. Uh, but if you're Square Enix, and we've talked about Square Enix's attitudes, maybe somewhat harsh uh, and uncompromising in terms of the performance of the games, do you think Square Enix looking at this really just regrets the fact that it's exclusive do you think this exclusivity is now starting to be counterintuitive in the current marketplace like for so Sony? i hope so i hope that they look at it and they you hope i so. hope that their numbers tell them that exclusivity and these timed marketing agreements and all the rest of it aren't in their best interest because they're not in our best interest as as people play in the games mm. um it's going to be difficult to weigh up though because what what sony give them isn't just a bag of cash they give them a whole heap of marketing and they did give them a whole heap of marketing and it's the same for all of the games like that sony do these exclusivity arrangements on the reason that they don't need to pay a whole heap of money is their marketing is is valued by their partners because they do give it a big spotlight that people notice um so it's pretty impossible to say for sure whether they're better or worse off as a result of this partnership but square enix though we know the new the new guy in charge the new ceo has said that he's like not too enamored with the exclusivity strategy we know that they're working more closely with xbox we know that they've taken money from epic in the past but hopefully are more willing to generally work on the pc side of things um and yet the evidence points to a very slow progression on that front we're seeing like that, that legends of mana or trials of mana whichever one it is mana game coming to xbox but that's pretty small for I by comparison to a Final Fantasy game really we've got Final Fantasy 14 on Xbox so the cogs are starting to turn we're starting to see these games go to more places for me like if part three oh, it's not going to happen because I think the marketing and arrangement is already in place for this one but if they yeah. were to say right part three is coming out every platform day and day they awesome thank you very much but I don't know it seems kind of inconsequential um how well this one does because all of that is already kind of set in stone well, yeah, I think you're correct. Uh, although in this case, we know the fact that this game ha is limited to the PlayStation for three months, I think. Um, they may may made that clear as much, the trailers at the bottom, the disclaimer, for at least three months, this game is exclusive on PlayStation. And I think what this will do is definitely add a little bit of pressure and impetus on Square to make sure that the PC release comes out sooner rather than later. Ranting. Do you yeah. like Final Fantasy? Do I you... love Final Fantasy. Um, yeah. Actually, before Final Fantasy VII Rebirth came out, I streamed and finished uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, which I hadn't finished all that time 
and I think that it is a fantastic game. I played Rebirth, uh, the first map, and it and it is a great game, and it is a total total uh, upgrade from the first game in almost every single aspect, and I love it. But if the game, uh, I, I mean, if this game it is performing badly, in my opinion, it is it is for two reasons. First of all, it mm-hmm. is because indeed I believe that it, it should have released in more uh, platforms, not just PS Five. I mean. I mean, I think that they could have released the game on the PC the uh, day and date also. I don't think that it would have been a problem. But yeah, I think it would have hurt, the, hurt the PlayStation 5 sales. I don't think it would have. Would I, it? Don't know. I don't know. I don't know because the PlayStation fans on about Final Fantasy they are very loyal. So I think that it would get its mm. uh, PlayStation sales anyways. But I think so too. I mm-hmm. think the main issue here, I think that the main issue is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth didn't have the same impact to us gamers and especially to us who are uh, old like me <laughs> and especially to the uh, older gamers. I mean, Final Seven, uh, I, I mean Final Fantasy Seven remake. I think that uh, the one reason why it uh, did so good in sales and why it was so well accepted, I think it was it was the game that uh, almost everybody was expecting since the PlayStation Three era. Uh, yeah, when yeah, when right. Sony that time they showed that uh, demo of uh, Cloud jumping from the train yeah. and everybody expected something like uh, like that for uh, decades and yeah. that's why I think that Final Fantasy VII remake made more sales and that's why I think that it it was more loved. As, it was a bit of a moment, wasn't it? It, it was a big yes, moment that people yes, cried. It, it, Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but there was all of that. So, yeah. Uh, well, you're uh, right. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, as for Rebirth, um, I don't think... Uh, uh, because uh, as for uh, Rebirth, because as I said, it is a great game. It is a fantastic game. But it doesn't carry the same impact as the first game. I think that's the main problem. And I think that because it is a very big game also, it is huge, gigantic. I think that many people say, I will buy this game later because I have Mm -hmm. too many things to play at the moment. And maybe they said to themselves, okay, I will buy this game later. Perhaps I will get it when it comes out to the PC where the graphics uh, will be better. And I don't know if the part about the performance mode not being good, I mean, as people say, because I think that the performance mode is fine. Um, I don't think, I, I don't know if that also played some part to this, to the low, to I... the low sale. I don't know. Doubt it. But it is a fantastic game. I am, and I have to say that I was a bit uh, surprised to see that it only did two million in sales. I mean, I was really expecting more. But I guess I would just be careful, like yeah. And this reported based on player data, not exactly you know squares like announced these. But it seems like multiple sources are suggesting that. So. Maybe, you know, we might be just talking about uh, the until it's really fully confirmed. Wouldn't treat it as gospel, but I think it's the writing is on the wall there. But you made some great points there, actually. And I think uh, the, the, the the big one was the uh, hype, Deadly. Deadly, uh, there was, it was the, one of the big three announcements. You had Last Guardian, you had Shenmue, uh, and you had Final Fantasy VII re- a remake, just like the dream came true, and that all that marketing and natural buzz was there and i I don't feel like final fantasy 7 rebirth had it despite being you know people looking forward to it it was just like you had final fantasy 16 last year and then this comes out it's like another it might just kind of loses his bluster a little bit um which is why square enix might not feel like the uh, money was worth it potentially 
uh, for it's money happens. it's a difficult one. I, th I think there's there's probably quite a few um, factors at play, and I think um, Elias, I, I think you, I think you you you're probably quite close to the reality of it in that there are there is actually just a hell of a lot to play right now and i think that's true final yeah. fantasy um seven rebirth um is probably so i, I i'm i'm not a, a final fantasy guy at all by the way um i understand that remake would have had a, a hell of a lot of hype around it um something that uh Eurogamer have called out in their article about um the sales figures story specifically is that uh i'm quoting here remake was released when most of the world was in lockdown and at the start of the covid19 pandemic um remakes release in april 2020 also predates the current cost of living crisis and at the end of the ps4's lifespan um whereas rebirth is currently only playable on ps5 um so I think there's there's probably I think probably the the cost of the cost of the game up front the fact that it's a sequel to a game that I and again I, I to be fair I don't know the nuances of the content that has been added or what's changed because I I, I don't follow Final Fantasy um, but I, I think Rebirth probably stands uh, sorry remake probably stood out as more of a landmark title for the platform than rebirth does because rebirth almost for me as an outsider sort of feels like something that i can pick up later because i'm not necessarily getting a lot of new stuff and again might be completely wrong there because again don't know much about final fantasy um i think yeah. the other i had another point i might have forgotten it um playstation sucks yes it, i think they there's definitely um you know we we've heard um i could to try and not balls his name is hiroti hiroki, hiroki Totoki. Totoki. thank you um he's he's obviously started talking about how it is important that playstation starts putting more games in more places in order to, to tackle their um budget problem and i do it, it's the one thing that i i am acutely aware of with sony that their their budget problem needs solving in order to fix the challenges that they've got around the the question of sustainability of their first party titles and their um third party sort of money hatted exclusives as well um i think as what we've heard from Phil Spencer and again um, Hiroki Tataki as well, um, that's probably going to go away a little bit. Um, as as to why that's happening, I think there's a number of reasons. But yeah, I, I don't know. It, it it is it is something that you can pick up later. You don't necessarily need to sort of. What are your thoughts on that? Do you, we how how excited were you guys being Final Fantasy fans about? Rebirth versus remake. Did was the hype level the same, so or did it wane a little bit? Because no, for me it was higher. Because um, like, okay, I, I loved Final Fantasy VII, and the game meant a lot to me. But I haven't liked a lot that Square Enix have done with the Final Fantasy series more recently. So mm -hmm. I did not trust them with remake whatsoever. And then they nailed remake, mm -hmm. and it was brilliant. Which meant going mm -hmm. into this year, uh, like the. The close of last year when we were talking about what's coming up this year i used to say i think dragon's dogma 2 is probably going to be the best game of this year but final fantasy 7 mm -hmm. rebirth is the one that i can't miss i have to pick it up at launch mm -hmm. because i don't want it spoiled so for me i think the enthusiasm wasn't comparable like i had to get this one straight away so mm -hmm. that kind of goes against the theory okay. that um and obviously my my take i'm freaking not very normal so it's not representative of the global population by any stretch Facts. of the imagination so i wouldn't really take it to mean very much at all <laughs> yeah that's true ace is weird it doesn't just ignore mm. everything you just said hmm. so so endearing. you know i i do think that there's a <laughs> fair is, amount of merit were to you excited for this that, as much as um, go sorry, sorry go on. i was gonna go taking your question to ranting and seeing oh you're muted yeah, you scum my life Sorry, sorry. I, I said finish what you were saying that the uh, that delay. Um, I yeah. I wonder if I I do think that probably the the cost of games right now has got a lot to do with it. I know that you know we we've obviously seen some sort of discourse from certain camps talking 
uh, you know, essentially pocket watching gamers and stuff like that. And I think that mentality is a little bit gross, especially in the middle of a cost of living crisis. I think, you know, mm-hmm. cre- uh, earnestly criticizing someone for enjoying playing games on Game Pass rather than quote unquote buying their games. I don't think that's very fair because I think mm-hmm. in the majority of the Western world right now, shit's getting tight and it's only getting tighter. And, um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that does have something to do with it as well. We are spoiled for choice in the best possible way as gamers. It's a fucking great time to be a gamer right now because there is so much to play. Yeah. But unfortunately, that also means that there's so much to buy. And I, I think, especially when a lot of these are single player games as well, it's very difficult to play more than one single player at a game at a time. Um, or at least that that's always been my experience as well. I think there's probably a number of factors as to why it hasn't necessarily met sales expectations. But, but I think maybe it's just got a we- longer tail. Well, d- Alex Zonda Battaglia of Digital Foundry, this was doing uh, on my timeline just now as you were saying that. He says this, I really don't understand the point of money hatting console exclusivity for the Final Fantasy titles. A lot of people with Xboxes and PCs would like to be playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on PC if they release another half-baked, stuttery, full-price version. I will groan. Mm-hmm. And to that I um, agreed, and I retweeted it because I hate the, the ponies. <laughs> I am sorry because... I, uh, by the way, I am sorry because I am Greek and my uh, um, English is not very good sometimes. What did he mean by that? He said that this was a good thing or that this is a bad thing? He says it's a bad thing. He says it's a bad thing because he doesn't see the thing. point of money hatting it um, because you're getting console exclusivity and is depriving the pc and playstation uh, okay. uh X, sorry pc and xbox crowd but also he says ultimately you still end up on pc a half-baked stuttery full price version of the game i think he's uh alluding to was it well which, which Final Fantasy 7 remake Square so Eden. remake and Square. rebirth are both unreal engine 4 games yeah. and unreal engine 4 quite notoriously on the pc has a lot of stutter and shader cache issues so it is very yeah. likely that when Final Fantasy VII Rebirth hits the PC, every time you hit a new area, it's going to stutter a bit. He's complaining because Remake was quite renowned for it, or notorious for it, I should say. Uh, okay. I just read it because I like console wars. But um, yeah, uh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I'm not a fan of money hatting. I think it's absolutely dog shit, lazy uh practice and some of the excuses people suggest like say, oh it lets them focus on a singular platform and you're falling for the marketing spiel well i've got sean Layden, the former head of whatever episode, whatever saying well the money hacking was just a marketing we just chucked money their way and we got it early which is the case for the vast majority of games yes i'm sure there'll be some benefits for honing in on the singular platform but we saw with final fantasy rebirth those benefits exactly shine through did they with the performance mode that had a terrible resolution for most people you may not have felt that rant but others did and the you know even the 30 fps mode uh not being great uh but money hat third party money hatting is the thing sony does it a lot i hope square enix just I feel like Square Enix are like, look, let's just freaking get this on the PC. They're going to be like ready, desperate now to get this shit on PC, man. Uh, because if these figures are true, it's a waste of time. You guys have time. Why am I running at 30 frames, chat? It's because I'm using my mobile phone data, which has done really well so far. Well, relatively. I'm, I'm still here. I'm impressed. So, All I'm, things considered, I'm, I'm very impressed with how you've been able to hold up tonight. I know. Yeah, I can, I I ask to... you, can I ask you guys about your opinion about Final, Seven, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, scoring only 2 million sales? Do you think that Square actually cares about it or that they do not because yeah. they are taking their money from Sony anyways in Sony only to keep them the enough game to compensate exclusive? The sales. They're okay. going to care. They are going to care, you think? Yeah, oh, yeah. So that 100%. means 
So that means that the, that there is a hope that we actually might get Final Fa the Final Fantasy VII uh, remake and rebirth on PC and on uh, uh, on uh, Xbox in the future. So they're gonna, they're gonna care insofar as like they're gonna care they want sales, but they're not gonna care in that they're gonna back out of any marketing agreement or signed contracts that they've got with Sony. So it's not going to come to Xbox for okay. as long as they've agreed with Sony that it's not going to come to Xbox, which is potentially a very long time. I'm fully mm, expect it on PC yeah. in the near future. For me, that's going to be an issue. If it comes out um, before I finish the game, it comes out on PC and I've got the option of playing it at like a nice pure 4K 60 frames per second or whatever. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, do I still finish it or do I start again over there? Hopefully I'll be finished well before then. Um, on Gaz's connection, I actually... So Gaz's camera, this is trivial non-point but i actually thought it would be a lot better because gaz lives in london and has a good solid 5g connection and if it can't manage yeah a camera stream i'm like oh, i don't know how are you supposed to play cloud streaming on your mobile phone if this is the quality that you get streaming your camera i'm well surprised bro do you know how many times yeah I, I mean to be honest i was i i set the event for the show like four times reset for some reason i I was so annoyed. I was raging when I was doing this. Like it's at 9.03 and I'm still like setting up the event and it's not doing it. So based on my experience there, I'm just grateful it works. But you're right. I'm paying like 5G broadband. I get these crazy speeds on, on my mobile when I'm doing a speed test and practice. Look at it instantly. It's like, it's a bit weird. Internet speeds are weird. But it's my stupid cat or my brother's cat. Shout out to Mojo piece of shit um but i love him <laughs> it was too cute it, it, it felt i could see like it felt a little bit guilty for the all of 15 seconds and went back to being a shit trying to get back into the studio um but that's cats but yeah you're right internet speeds it's weird it's weird and then makes you understand like you know all this cloud nonsense as well like if you can't do a stream uh, you know, even uploading the thumbnail for this took, I was taking a few seconds. I'm like, why? Um, I don't yeah, know shit. Do you know, you know what? I Do I have hear, my VPN on? I don't. I don't. You know, I hear David Jaffe saying in in his streams all the time that the that uh, cl that uh, cl cloud gaming is the future and the consoles that they are going away and things like that. And David I Jaffe, you're a piece of. According no, no, no. to Elias, he just said, he's, clip he's it. going to kill <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> and I am thinking, how on earth can we say that uh, cloud gaming, that it is the future, when half the internet connections in uh, half the globe are, are shit? Here in Greece, yeah. we, uh, uh, I mean, here in Greece, we got uh, feta cheese. Fiber. <laughs> we got fiber. It's true. <laughs> Guys, I'm I'm gonna kill you, man. Anyway. <laughs> Here in Greece, we got the fiber connection just a year and a half ago. To show you how uh, backwards we are when compared to the rest of the globe, how the hell can ah. we say that uh, cloud gaming is going to work on a uh, global scale when half the internet connections in this world are shit? I mean, the, this is where I, I was arguing with Jaffe uh, back and forth a lot on. Um, when the Xbox announced this exclusivity plan and it, said, it doesn't matter because the box doesn't matter because cloud is going to be big. I'm like, bro, you've got your head in the clouds, man. There is no way the internet speeds are going to be that good. Like, you literally stop smoking weed. Oh, he, he smokes a lot of shit. Uh, I stop eating this strong ass shit. Jaffe, you're wrong. Unless something changes fundamentally where we get this Starlink thing that Elon Musk is trying to sell everywhere globally, it's not there. Ereni in the chat, that's a Greek name. One of my friends was called Ereni. She was yeah. very beautiful. Um, uh, I'm not the Ereni in chat. I'm sure you're beautiful as well. But uh, just uh, hey, look at that. The Greek squad is here. I, yeah, I remember that. I told Shit. you that I was going to bring you to <laughs> give you a good Greek uh, audience. Yeah, no, it's, it's really nice, man. It's nice to see. Uh, yeah. 
Um, but you see, like, it's good to get your perspective as well, man, because in a lot of these conversations we talked about, uh, you know, digital, we talked about cloud, and it's good to get your perspective uh, yeah. on, on that, man, because, like, internet speeds aren't where, where they should be. Um, interestingly, I've seen, like, my cousins in Pakistan, the I mean, bruh, like half the time their electricity goes out so it's not exactly the, the, the most like modern thing there yet they are adopting um digital a little bit more as well just because the convenient side of things and i think they end up using the turkish store because it's more um oh yeah economically viable oh my god yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! This, oh, I should. Sorry, did I mention the enemy? Did I mention the enemy to, to the Greeks? No, going, don't, oh, oh my don't god! Stop. Don't say that! Don't oh stop. my god! No, 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 no! Don't say no, no, that. me and Zoka all the time. I just mentioned Greeks, and he uh, texts, and he gets annoyed. Shout out to Zoka, you piece of shit. Pusti skata malag. Oh, I'm sorry. This is gonna get. YouTube doesn't understand. YouTube doesn't understand. <laughs> Guys, um, I have to say that you are almost a full-fledged uh, a Greek. <laughs> the way you care <laughs> and the way you say things about the Greeks uh, doing things in in bed and things like that. You are uh, halfway there, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you spend time with Greeks, man. Um, <laughs> I love the Greeks. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't love your internet speed. You only got a fiber a year and a half ago. What the f I bet Turkey got it before you did. Yeah. I don't know why I'm trying to <laughs> stoke <laughs> international war. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a good conversation to have. And I, I think, look, I think that's covered our, all our topics. But I did also wanted to ask you, uh, gents, uh, well, how do you think? Because last year is seen as a pretty, pretty strong year uh, for gaming. I thought it was a really strong year for gaming. What do you think? 2024 has been so far in the four months there and how do you think 2024 in generally will will pan out asa do you think we've had a you i mean you've had your big final fantasy game you've had dragon's dogma which i think you like i do, I do. and maybe some VR games you, you, not so many VR games there are like dogma. a few around but not a lot we haven't talked that much about dragon's dogma um i don't think this year is going to stack up to the last one necessarily but it's still a strong year and i always find it I, I find it really interesting that you have these conversations at different times where one minute people are saying like 2023 is the best year in gaming i've ever experienced and then on the other hand they're saying these consoles haven't proven themselves and i hate this generation and it's like where's the disconnect <laughs> How can you go yeah, from yeah, this yeah. is the best time in gaming and there's so many awesome games to play and I hate these consoles and it's really disappointing in the same like in the same brain space. I don't I don't don't really feel it in the same way. Um I'm mostly positive. I think it's going great and this year I don't, I, what else is coming? Hades 2 is, is coming. I'm looking forward to that. Avowed is coming. There's is still, Hades 2 coming out this year? There's still some big hits is coming oh, this year. Oh, shit. Sorry. Hades 2, at very least, the early access is coming out this year, which means I might not be playing it this year because I'm not playing it in early access. But, I'm yeah, not, that's I'm a big not, one not on the horizon for me. I can't wait for Hades 2. But. Wow. Yeah, you're right about some of the people with the doom and gloom with the singular track. I think both statements can be true if you can disconnect them and say i'm disappointed with the consoles for this basis and they haven't lived up stacked up to my expectations on where we should be and which is where i'm at um but at the same time i love the games and the gaming experiences and the breadth and variety of them and i mean the dragon's dog is not a game i didn't think i would be mentioning in in one of my game of the year potentials but it's definitely stacking up i haven't even tried hey look as much as I make fun of Rise of the Ronin on Twitter, um, I'm actually looking forward to playing that. Wolong was my most played game of 2023. And the Team Ninjas games, they get me saucy. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun. Um, and 2024 looks like it could be something really special when you've got Hellblade coming out. You've got Indiana Jones coming out as well. Like That, that could be something significant as well. And then we'll, uh, on the PlayStation front, maybe concord might surprise um what else is there hey you still i don't know about but if it's early access i don't count that 
What else is a big game? I feel like I'm missing out. What are the big games coming Black out? Black Myth Wukong coming out in the summer. Is it actually coming Black out? Black Myth Wukong. It's got a date. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, coming right. out on PC Ooh, in the Black summer. Black Myth Wukong. They delayed the console version. Oh. Uh, oh, I didn't oh. know that. That's Stalker 2 shit. got pushed back to September as well. I think that was supposed to be a Q1, oh. but obviously, you know, they, they, as far as I'm concerned, GSC can have as much time in the oven as they want. They've been through enough hell to warrant that so let them cook um but yeah, yeah i'm i'm looking forward to that i'm really excited for stalker 2 um i do want to go and pick up the trilogy at one point but again like i said my backlogs are really fucking massive um mm. I, I think there's a lot of stuff to be excited about this year um uh, yeah i'm, like I'm interested yeah <laughs> I, well so i i'm interested to see what Sony's showcase this year might bring because obviously like we say the last year has been quite quiet but actually they have put out a fair bit this year some of it's sort of third party stuff um I think uh Stellar Blade is Stellar Blade's like a third party exclusive oh yeah it? yeah but that's, that's Stellar Blade I've downloaded still the, counts, even though yeah yeah exactly was. I've, I've like downloaded really the demo good. for that but I haven't jumped on it yet um but yeah, they, there is there is a lot to play. Um, I think Game Pass is offering some really great stuff at the moment. I've noticed that Xbox have really turned on the content tap for Game Pass, so that's really nice to see. Um, no, what have they got on there? So they got on there? big sort of standouts for me recently. Um, the Quarry got added, which I, I think came to PS Plus a, a couple months ago, but still, I, I really liked the Quarry. So if you haven't checked that out, I would do. Um, mm -hmm. Diablo 4 has obviously made its way to... Uh, game pass now as well um there's a game called harold halibut coming mm. that looks yeah. really, that really really interesting. interesting it looks really good um so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to that i'm pleased that that's coming to game pass as well i think it's a good get um i actually i've been very very impressed with something that playstation have done this month with their ps plus um Zao Tales of Kenzara is launching day one on PlayStation Plus. And I've I've said on this show before and in super chats to this show as well, like I I really want PS Plus to do better and have more um sort of day one content and just be a little bit more competitive with Game Pass. So I'm pleased to see that um a title like that, which is the <laughs> um, EA's new um roguelike platformer style game. Um, okay. I think that looks cool. What? And what was it called? Potentially, uh, Zao Tales of Kenzara. I think I've seen. Oh yeah, this game. Ha -ha, it's but looks game like Ori. Looks... Mm. Doesn't look like yeah. Ori, but looks like oh. it plays yes, like Ori. Yes, it's not roguelike, sorry. Yeah. But yeah, that looks oh, good. This, and that's, this, that's this coming. Harold, but... <laughs> Harold, Harold Halibut looks beautiful. Like it, it's all sort of handcrafted, sort of Wallace and Gromit like style look, yeah. animation. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it looks stunning. Um, and that's coming to Game Pass very, very soon, actually. So that's really cool. Um, obviously, we've mm. got um, uh, Avowed, Indiana Jones. Um, and Hellblade. Was there? Uh, Hellblade as well, around the corner. There's Yeah, there's a lot There's a lot to look forward to. And I think for, for me, despite there also being a lot to look forward to this year, even if like I think the volume this year is smaller than it was last year in terms of how many games we had coming. But I do sort of blame the hangover of COVID for some of that. But there's still so much from last year that I need to catch up on, as well as good stuff that's coming this year. Like, honestly, I think it's a fantastic time to like playing video games. I really do. Yeah. And I'm really, really happy that there is so much to enjoy. Yeah, no, uh, I'm there with you, man. Like, th this year, man, I get to play Sekiro, which is quickly and end up being one of my best games of all time. I uh, get to play that on stream with people. I'm streaming as well, so it's slightly different for me, but it's a new experience which I really enjoy. I help latest with the most anticipated game for me. Mm. I think I think that could be something really special. Like I like the first one. Um but I I I'm not like I don't know. Like I could be one of those games where I feel like there's a chance where I feel like they haven't taken enough risks or to before or they've not potentially gone 
beyond the first one a bit too much i'm not i'm not asking for the world there but i feel like if you said retread of the same themes you've got a little bit of a harder task to imp impress me um and a bit of repetition i see the psychosis i, I think I, that I the so i actually um i wrote an article on this for uh xbox era earlier this week so if you want to go and check that out you can do but um there was mm -hmm. an event that um ninja theory held um in cambridge in collaboration with cambridge neuroscience where they talked about um psychosis as a condition and how um how uh the team at ninja theory have sort of helped sort of articulate that through a video game um the event itself was like three and a half hours long so it was a really long event but i found it really interesting um and i think one of the things that stood out to me is the fact that in the first hellblade game you are alone the entire time you you're obviously you know mm. kept company by yeah. um uh, senua's sort of uh, visions that are presented through her experiences with psychosis and stuff but um this time round i think the story has a lot more kind of uh, a, a lot more um variety to it in terms of there being this introduction of other characters and with the, the event that i um wrote an article about sort of talks quite interestingly about um how there's this sort of trust is challenged massively when you are surrounded by people and you're experiencing psychosis because you may have voices from actual people around you telling you one thing but you've also got voices in your head telling you something different and i think that as a narrative tool is going to be quite interesting ah, yeah, that's a good point. it's also only an eight hour experience as well so i think i i'm very pro it not having bloat partly in the interest of not having enough time to play the games that i want to play um but also you know keep it tight keep it concise take all the bloat and the bullshit out i don't need collectibles i don't need skins i don't need any of that just give me a good fucking yeah, game yeah this is not like yeah and that's what hellblade should be uh, yeah. and i like the fact that's a condensed eight hour experience um something different that respects my time a little bit mm. um and my wallet actually well this is on game yeah. pass it's even more crazy uh mm. we get to see the heavyweight visual heavyweight of uh xbox and the game that was re revealing the series x uh or company the series x reveal uh, i should say uh, finally come out the potentially best example of consolidation pro xbox shears um it's a good it's a good year for gaming uh, i feel like though the gaming news needs to just i want to see a little bit it's a bit quiet like we we, we we can have these shows every saturday and there's a multitude of like topics about games themselves that we can talk about so that's not an issue but it's nice to talk about new gaming news as well and i don't know if we'll get to see the hardware stuff um be revealed anytime soon nintendo what is that going what are they doing uh in the front like the summer normally we're actually it's april april march time is like um well april may time is when we start to see the big announcements and the hype machine for the events starting in summer as well so you'll have jeff Keeley going out there sacrificing um uh, a little virgin to get his show um the blessing of uh or the devil um and shitting on the legacy of e3 because that's what jeff key is yeah. um and then you'll have microsoft's big event which will have a lot of uh things to discharge and you have playstation's showcase event rumored by jeff grubb to be uh lit. oh actually just before we mentioned jeff, jeff grubb rem uh, reminded me of this no, he didn't remind me of it but the name of his the mention of his name um dead space freaking to remake apparently it's cancelled yeah i've cancelled the freaking dead space 2 remake man i i find it criminal the dead space one was the remake was incredible man like what the flip um i think the yeah but didn't, oh. didn't ea come out later on and saying that these accusations aren't true did they come out? They came out and said there's no validity to it. 
um but not to say that they are making dead space remake 2 so essentially what okay. what um jeff grubb was saying was that um dead space remake 2 had been cancelled and ea motive were working on um battlefield and iron man right the part that wasn't valid is that dead space 2 wasn't so much cancelled it never got off the ground it was never started but ea motive are not working mm -hmm. on dead space they are working on battlefield and iron man so there's no validity to the rumors in terms of the fact that it wasn't it wasn't cancelled it was never even started the concept was barely entertained there is no dead space 2 remake coming and that studio is working on other games so so that means i never f finished or barely started dead space 2 so my stream that Me neither. um yeah i love Dead space 1 i love the Dead space 1 remake but yeah. 2 i never played and they say that too that is much better than the first game also a so... lot of people say that a lot of people say you don't need a remake as well because dead space 2 is actually such a good game that's aged really well um mm. i don't want to scream on stream but i guess i, I want to play that old game and because dead space 2 is a special game so i'll be sitting on that so if it's better, but it's sad, man, because Dead Space 1 remake was so good, man. It, like, it, it really was took... amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like that's, one of that's the best experiences want. that I had uh, back in when it, when the, did it came out? November 2022. Yeah. Uh, I think you're right. I'm not sure. Or February 22, 2023. No, no, no. I think on November 2022, I think that it came out. I think. Oh, for some reason, I'm I thought sure. it was last year. But yeah, okay. Uh, I love that game. I love that game. Okay. There are a few games we don't know about, by the way. Um, th thank you for mentioning that, Kalel. Like, Ma Mass Effect. Like, what what's happened in Mass Effect? A Bioware just sitting there plugging around making Mass Effect? Uh, I don't know. And then the Beyond Good and Evil 2, what's happening with that? Do you remember that from Ubisoft and that crazy engine that they showed off that you can see you s real time go into different planets and shit? That I actually, I'm sorry to. I actually remember reading somewhere that Beyond Good and Evil 2 was cancelled and they used the tech. From the from beyond and evil two in uh, other games, I think it is a speculation of mine, but it may be true. The tech that we see in Star Wars Outlaws, where the ship goes away from the planet and goes into I th I knew you orbit, say that. And, yeah. that, and that they, and where there are no uh, low loading screens, I think that they took it from the I. I remember seeing that on the tech demo of Beyond and Evil 2. So yeah. I think that they yeah, I remember took... that, yeah. So I think Could that they, they took the assets from that game and they put some of them in Star Wars Outlaws. I don't know. Yeah. I think you're right, man. I think it might be. I can ask my friend um, who works at Ubisoft, but he's not really the tech guy there. But when I asked him last year what's happening with Burger King, he's like, eh. And I was like, oh. <laughs> well, what does that mean? He's French, so it could be wee. Oh, it could be eh. Uh. Um, he likes to make noises. Uh, but yeah, you're right, though. When we were talking about, um, the, when you still talked about the persistent traveling and no loading in uh, Star Wars, I was thinking about, like, hmm, should I talk about Beyond Good and Evil 2 there? And I think. Uh, that could be dead as part of Ubisoft's policy on doubling down on just the products that work for them because they announced they're going to double down on established franchises like Assassin's Creed and shit, which is a symptom of this generation. Less risks, especially Ubisoft. Yeah, because if Deliver you have seen on uh, Twitter lately, uh, there's uh, an image circulated that shows the menu screen of uh, Assassin's Creed Red. And also oh, yeah. there was another screen that came out that showed that we may, that we may have a Splinter Cell uh, remake getting what's, announced also what's with the remakes man make uh, a new game i'm, I'm Why all for a cell remake do it the <laughs> 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 
this is or at least some sort of reboot of Splinter Cell. Like we know that something is going to work from Ubisoft, but I'm I'm really excited about whatever, however Splinter Cell resents. Me too, me I'm too. Like, I'm a big Splinter Cell fan, and I love Splinter Cell Blacklist, and I love Splinter Cell. So yeah, I like Splinter Cell as well. Right, Tell me for cowards and wankers. Asa hates stealth, so that's that. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that's the ultimate anti Acer game. It's just it's meant to sell. Bro, by the, it's by the way, by the way, I want to say that the one game that uh, none of you mentioned earlier when you were talking uh, when you were talking about what is coming out in uh, 2024 none of you mentioned the elden ring dlc that is coming out on oh june. yeah that's coming out next month yeah june? Uh, on june uh, the 21st i think oh a, a tree shout and out to it's another uh, huge game also message refracted um bro the elden ring I have to complete Elden Ring before that releases, then I have to do the DLC. So there's pressure on me to do that. And before that, I have to finish Sekiro. Um, Joseph Wall says, Joseph Fritzl's basement is better than Ubisoft games. Really, Joseph? I doubt it. And <laughs> we've got uh, Bob Effect Gaming, who became a member. Then the message got deleted. I don't know what happened there. Um, yeah, man, like... There's a lot of games there. Oh, Shadow of the Earth Tree might be an actual, like, we call it DLC, but they're going to give you a shit ton of content there. So there's a lot there, man. Get, if, you, if you're looking at it now, Game of the Year nominees, you've got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Hellblade 2, should be there, but you never know, fucking hell. Um, do you think... Sh yeah, you know what? Yeah, Shadow of the Earth Tree should get nominated because you were nominated DLC last year, you shit melts. Wasn't DLC... Uh, no, it wasn't even DLC that was put up nominations by the Game Awards. What was put up? It was a re uh, Resident Evil remake. Uh, Resident Evil, yeah, 4. Yeah, Resident Evil Just... remake. And then Cyberpunk got nominated for, like, best ongoing game, which... No, that was bullshit. That was yeah, bullshit, that man. bullshit. Although I am playing um, the DLC and it's really... Oh, no, so Cyberpunk is great, but I wouldn't call it an ongoing game by any means. Yeah, no, uh, I don't know what... This is stupid. But Cyberpunk is one of... Incredible game now. It has changed so much. The combat is so much better now. Like, I'm just finding more and more weapons, more and more guns. It's, it's so good. And the DLC, beautiful. Even on the Series X and performance mode, it's probably one of the best-looking games you'll play uh, on that console. It's really, really good. Shout-out to Punty. Uh, yeah, so, like, it's, it's going to be a good year. And hopefully we'll get some gaming news uh, that gets us hyped. Um, I'm very intrigued to see. Because I think we're going to get some big, big uh, surprises. I'm expecting some from Sony. They have to show something what their studio has been working on as well. So I think it's going to be quite exciting. And Xbox has the pressure. Xbox will have to show some of these games like Fable and Perfect Dark and State of Decay. It's, it's all up. Like, this is it. We're heading in the mid. We're in squarely in the halfway point uh, of this gen. And this is where we start to get to see the real tasty morsels. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Well, chat, it has been fun and we did we made the show all running well my thing's running on crappy look at my face pixelated as hell damn um but it worked chat thank you so much smash the like button if you enjoyed the show and we're about to do the outros well sir wrapped in grief gamer this is your debut it was so much fun it was effortless like we've been talking to you for years how are thank you yeah bro? man same here same same here i hope you had a good time Okay, my address. Uh, my name is uh, Ilias. I have a gaming channel called uh, Randy Greek Gamer, w which is in Greek, so you will not be able to understand much of the language that is uh, um, spoken there. But I do know English, so if you come to my streams and you speak to me, I will respond to you, no problem. So. I stream every single new game that comes out, and uh, I do vlogging, and I do various stuff. I try to do everything with only two hands, 
and the lightsaber up uh, up my uh, my uh, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the thing uh, now. <laughs> so yeah, that's who I am. If you want to see some gaming, come to my uh, channel. That's it. Definitely check it out. It's good Thank gameplay you, as well. And please stream a Halo on Legendary so we can laugh at you. Uh, no, but definitely no, no, check. No, don't do this to me. No, no, no. Please don't do this to me. <laughs> Pressurize to do it. That'd be fun to watch. <laughs> but thank you so much, man. It was, it was a pleasure. Lovely having you it on. Was awesome. Really good take. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. Deadly Headley. Look at you, man. Just squinting, looking at yourself. Look, you're not even looking at me. You're looking at yourself like. Phew. Oh, I'm so sexy right now. I can tell. Um, how are you doing? Man? Tell the people what's up, what's in store for you. Well, thank you very much for having me again, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, my name is Deadly Headley. Uh, if you haven't heard of me or seen my channel before, um, I'm a fairly new content creator. I have been making YouTube content for about nine months. I have amassed just over 800 subscribers in that time, which I'm very, very proud of. Um, I have... Uh, so I'm a qualified journalist. I have a, a degree in music journalism and broadcasting. Uh, and my day job is I am a, a graphic designer. So I sort of combined those two skills together to make something beautiful in the form of YouTube content. Um, I, I try and post when I can. Um, it's, it's difficult because life is life. Um, but there is a hell of a lot of work that goes into my videos. Um, I would compare them to um something like what um randall thor does when he posts video content um or similar to to colt eastwood in terms of editing style and delivery style um go and check out my channel give me a sub um uh, draw me some likes um yeah it, enjoy the enjoy the content um i have got some more content planned um but it's one of those things where i just sort of have to kind of to balance it with real life and some other shit, which I actually talk about a little bit in my uh, video. So if you want to know why the hell I don't post very often, uh, actually the first couple of minutes have explained that quite adequately. Um, I but yeah, you do a podcast uh, as well. Latest... I do do a podcast. Thank you, Asa. So you can also find me on um, Asa's channel, Gaming Arcadia, every Thursday. We run the Xbox Series podcast with the inimitable Gamsley, um, who is just a fantastic human being as well as acer as well obviously even with his terrible takes on Brotato and stealth games um we, <laughs> we have a great time over there we go live um i think it's 3 p.m eastern 12 p.m pacific and 8 p.m um uk time on a thursday um and yeah we have a really good time we try and sort of Park the console warring. Sometimes it seeps through, but we do try it to keep that to a minimum. Gamsley broke that rule in spit. It was fantastic. Did you yeah. watch? Um, yeah. he's he's amazing. He's an amazing guy. I love Gamsley so much. Shout out to him. On Gamsley, keep stoking um, the flames. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, those, trust truth. me, you can also obviously find me on um, Twitter at Deadly Headley underscore. Uh, and as of this week, and I'm not sure how regular it will be, but um, the guys at Xbox Era very kindly added me as a contributor to their site. So you Ooh. can now find an article that I published on there um, with a nice little Xbox Era if I'd head, uh, headshot as well, which is really cool. Um, I haven't written um, like an article to be published in a really, really long time. So I shout out to them for sort of enabling that. Um, but yeah. It's been really cool. That's me. Okay. Thank you so much, man. It was, it was great having you both. Asa, do you want to plug your show thing as uh, Deadly Company? You forgot to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, loads of shows. And actually, even more shows coming. But at the moment, there's the Arcadia Roundtable on a Tuesday with Dodge and Chris Grinnell, and that's a general gaming podcast. On the Wednesday, you get just me talking to everyone for multiple hours, which actually, um, I had had that at like, the bottom of the pile for a while, but people insist that they like that one. So Q&A is on a Wednesday. And then you've got the Xbox Series podcast with my good friend Deadly Headley and Gamsley. They're all, they're actually really fun shows going really well. So loads of stuff going on there. And I'm very, I'm um, this close to getting back onto putting some videos on the channel as well, getting back into the reviewing scene and all that kind of stuff. So big things happening. Nice. Um, Gaz, your turn. 
I have no internet, so don't expect anything from me. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. There will be content, but that was good. Yeah, you'll see it. <laughs> Slash the Do you know when button. you're getting that sorted? Like, when's, when's that getting fixed? Oh, for fuck's sake. I it's know, man. Than, I was like, yeah. I called them up. They were like, That's Tuesday. I'm like, fuck! That's a long time. That's an age where I've got my Halo video. Where am I going to get the clips and stuff? Well, I've got gameplay. By the way, guys, 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 one piece of uh, advice. Because here at home, we have like uh, four cats. If you don't want your cat to do any damage into the house, feed her like there is no tomorrow put her food oh, all yeah. the time Fatten and the she shit. will sleep all day long <laughs> well and there will be it's no my brother's damages. cat so it's it's gone now it's not here anymore i, I kind of you. miss it but i look <laughs> at what's left of my uh internet and piece and here's a piece of it right here oh my um, God. and i'm like damn uh, but yeah i don't have the cat anymore it's gone it's been eliminated now it's gone back to my brother uh so hopefully i would have fed it but it's, it's a piece of shit it doesn't even eat it just loves to mess around it's like an evil little shitty cat but i love it it's so cute uh but damn it content will come and now that ramadan's over i've got lots of content planned so uh definitely check it out um uh, including a source video where septic the character returns it's gonna be fun Thank you I'm so really much, glad everyone. To see your channel back, by the way. Congrats on launching that because I haven't actually told you yeah. that in person yet. I think it's awesome. Oh, thank you, man. And then that's really? just, just starting. It's good to stream games and talk about games, which I've been intending to for a while, not just console war stuff. But I love console war stuff, even though there is no console war because Microsoft f it up. So <laughs> here I come. Uh, <laughs> there's still a lot of stupid people in the world, me included. So there's a lot of content to come. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Well, if you're listening to Spotify, if yeah, Spotify has been spotty because Ace has been uploading them, but for some reason it hasn't appeared on Spotify. I don't know why. Spotify is mishandling videos. We're going back to audio. This one will be fine. They'll be fine from now on. Okay, so yeah, chat, uh, Spotify listeners, we, we, that's the reason why we're going back to audio um, because of that. Um, which means I could actually upload it, Ace. My in well, I have no internet now. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, but yeah. Uh, thank you for listening on the uh, channels do you can leave a good review if you do listen on google and spotify and all that shit it does help us out a lot and i will do the timestamps soon take care love you all peace bye to my pixelated face safe